His name is magnificent. His character is impeccable and impeccably sound. You cannot equate him to no God or created image of one's mind. He is superior to every concept, every thought, every imagination, every deduction. He is far greater. And the power of his magnificence is beauty. He shares that with no one. He simply pours out that splendor upon his arm, his nation. His people, that's so good, they are a treasure unto him. And so when he looks upon them, it refreshes his shadow, his heart, his chest, his breast is satisfied. When they draw from the breath of life, the breath, the shards of substance, and that is the living Torah, Yoshua. Hamashiach. It is like a nurturing father that nurtures the child that he lay the child's head on his chest and it soothes the child and the child and all of its erratic displeasure of one's demeanor. The child is consumed with that beat of the heart. And it settles that child down. That the child finds rest. That is the heart of Yah. That we as a nation. We can find Shafat. Rest in Torah. With great delight. We find the Shafat. The comfort. Of confidence and assurance in Torah. And despite all the ills of opposition, we do not surrender, we do not condescend, and we do not lay down the sword of Sadiq unto the powers of darkness. If our Kuach, the strength of our knowledge of Torah, our passion for truth, if it fails us, if the wicked can subdue us, then me odds, little is our strength. So we don't have much strength at all, Yisrael. That's why the testimony of Yah's great power, Yoshua HaMashiach, is our strength. And that has literally been obliterated out of the minds of a nation that he has elected. Our minds are the cesspool of every kind of indignant, wicked thought and concept. It is the purveyor of every kind of ill that is against the Most High. Now we can amuse ourselves and say, that's not me, but we are full of ourselves. We are very disingenuous. I pray you don't pray. I'm a prayer warrior, you are not. The zeal of one that makes As Moshe, you will see the brightness of that beauty. And his nation is not one that offer a pala. Kid yourself and lie to yourself. And when you lie to you, it's easy to lie to others. One of the most pronounced attributes of the nation of Yisrael is that when the Abba makes himself known unto his people, there is a consistent, a persistent, of one activity that is dominant in their minds, their actions, their deeds, and that is judgment. For he makes himself Yada known by his mishpatim, his execution of sadiq righteous judgment. 
that he judge us not according to our emotions of what stipulations that we perceive are correct, but he judge us according to Torah, to light, to truth. We are either found guilty or not guilty. There is no middle grounds at all. We are guilty or we're not guilty. And if we continue in the process of that, then the power of Ovon iniquity began to cloud out his Torah. You become cold against him. No expression of love. Love has an attribute or there are attributes associated to love that are expressed unto one. So you cannot say you have love if we don't express that in the fullness of its filaments like the light shine that others may see the power of this true achab, this love of God. I'm glad that I can constantly reprove myself and speak to me. I speak to me more than I speak to you because I'm with me 24-7. So I speak to me all the time. I know that we may think that he is somewhat pontificating to make himself look as though he's right. No, I speak to me like that because I know I am not right. As far as my bazaar, my flesh, there dwelleth, there lives no tall thing. There's no excellent passion for Torah, period. It's just not there. So we must be, that two letter of the word, we must be asa, we must do, we must be formed. And our minds, our concepts must be fashioned by the wisdom of Torah. And when we hear the profoundness of its speech, we cannot allow the darkness of our conscience began to cause that to become obscure, or the obscurity of that knowledge began to fade from our thoughts, our conscience, that we began to defiantly, with all sense of knowing it's wrong, we defy Yah, when a man does that. When one does that with no conscience of conviction, there's a darkness, a deep-seated one that has set into one's mind it is the truth we're in the season and the time whereby between the sixth and the ninth hour there was darkness upon the face of the air from one corner of the earth to the extreme corner the mind was not on almighty yah there was no appreciation for that which had hung on this shameful, despicable stake. There was no thought of the mandate that Yah had instructed a nation that that light might shine and that the going, the heathens may ask, who is this excellent one? that you show homage to. There's a great fervence uh, association of love with them. They don't ask us that, do they? They don't ask us that, do they? Because the light has become a light of gross darkness. We want to participate in the world's activities and it cannot be we must come out of her we can't touch the unclean things of this olaf of the world that's why we need wise counselors every man is not wise every gray-headed man is not wise every elderly imma she's not wise Wisdom speaks from the ponim of a man, from the beauty of the expression 
of the Ahod. It speaks. And it just doesn't speak, it speaks with great volume. We have concentrated on being like the world. We have negated to want to be like Yah. And men will ask and inquire. They don't know, they don't understand the excellence of Yah. I'm going to teach today. The strength of Yisraya must resonate with great volume. It must. We must have men of wise counsel to teach, not just in verbiage, but their actions, their activities. Same thing with the Baptist Zion. You know, my Isha said she made mention I was discussing Ima Sabea. She's getting older. And so she says to me, Re'ak, she is very persistent. She helps. She works. She doesn't mind. She's always. I said, don't stop her then. I said, that's what keeps her alive. That's what keeps the body alive. That's what enriches the blood. And that's what purges out the toxicity. I say, keep her working. Sure, I'm concerned with her. She's the oldest among us. And I don't want her beauty to fade. Don't get crazy on me. Don't get crazy. Because I will gut you like you gut a hog. And I don't touch hogs. You can pray all you want to. It's to your damn death and destruction. You're sure he uttered profoundly uh, unto the nation of his people. I want to be gotten here where I began on last Shabbat. And I want to be gotten in the book of Yakahana, in the book of John. In chapter 9 and verse 4. When Yoshua had given blind or sight to the one that was uh, alive, the one had or having no concept of the power of God, we have very little concept of the knowledge of his truth. Uh, one that could not see beyond the darkness, the hoshech, the obscurity uh, of the vain imaginations of his mind. His concepts were developed not by light and the house of Israel. Our concepts of Yah, they're not developed by the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. They're developed not by the dark speech of Yah, the wisdom, the hukmah, but by the imaginations of our old conscience that have been bred in Greek darkness, absent. From the truth of Yah. And so this is what the blind man epitomizes. He epitomizes the concepts that are developed in the mind of Yisrael. That our forefathers began to impregnate uh, that DNA into us. Uh, and now our minds are so far from him. Our love for him is not even a love. He is a passing thought in our minds. And we must get real. And we must judge ourselves consistently. You're sure healed this man that was ever. No eyes, his eye in his spiritual. And his mental, intellectual uh, concepts, uh, they were not developed. Yeah. So it is among Yisrael. When one has the capacity, uh, if I may use the word, quote, intelligentsia, unquote, uh, one has the ability to express the power of Torah 
in a very um, uh, of expressions a uh, uh, superlatives because uh, one understand what a definitive is one doesn't just talk to talk because we're going to be judged by every word that proceeds out of our mouths uh, and so every word is vital especially in the dark season and so this man his eye and uh, his spiritual eyes uh, his mental perception was not developed because he could not see. It was based upon senses. Uh, it was based upon uh, those things that he could sense uh, without the actual uh, perception uh, of what was before him. We don't see what's before us. And so we tend to live in a world that is sensual. And everything is based on our senses, our feelings, and our emotions. So we tend to function from that realm. We don't function from the spiritual realm. We function from a realm that is carnal, which is not subject unto the Torah of Almighty Yah. And so when Yahshua healed this blinded man, he responded unto those, especially the Talmudim, and those that questioned the authority and the power, the might, the reason for this. There's a reason for everything. I hope to bring some light to that today for us. So he uttered in Yakahara 9.4, he says, I must work. I must work. The mitzvah, the works of him, Almighty Yahweh, that sent me. He said, while it is day, while there is bukha, while there is light, there is awe. There is a ma'or, there is a rejoicing. Uh, to know that Yah has sent the power of his dabarim, uh, the fullness of his Torah, the power of his word, uh, to express the greatness of his strength uh, that defies all humanity, uh, that defies all concepts of man's mind, uh, that defies all of the legitimacy uh, of, the, of the wisdom of man. Because this body shall lie in the grave for three days and three nights. And it shall get up with the great power of Almighty Yah. As Yisrael shall uh, be trod in the furnace of the fire. The Sarah, the great afflictions, the trials, anxiety, and great calamity shall overtake them. I must do the works of Yah while it is day. And he talks about a season that is called the Layil, the night season. He says, for the night season comes. It enters in. It comes upon us. It boom. It shall proceed forth. It shall enter in upon the people. He said, for the night season comes. When lo, L-O, no, no man can work. He cannot fashion his mind according to the Torah. According to the concepts, the precepts of Yah, according to the wisdom of Yah, he said the night season comes when no man can work. When a man works, when he does a physical application of a job, there's a process and he labors, there's action. And when a man knows that the night season is coming, he must finish this task. It may be monumental, it may be a small task, but he must finish the task before the darkness set. Because he knows that he cannot labor. In the same fashion, when there's light of Torah, when there's wisdom of Torah, as though when his mind, when the hoshach, when the darkness, when the obscurity of Torah is hidden from the minds of men. When there's all kinds of speculative uh, speculations uh, and all kinds of derivatives uh, of one's interpretation, uh, that it does not alter or change the will of a man. 
The Torah change. It changes one. It transforms one. It renews us. We are not the same that we once were. Our activities, our, our actions are not predicated uh, upon a mind that was seeped uh, in darkness uh, and activities that were unclean. Uh, there's a new man. And all things are cast away. And then what, behold, all things become renewed. There's a vitality. There's a strength. There's a maturity. One has maturated uh, to that state whereby Yah will trust them with the small things. I don't want him to trust me with the great things. I want him to trust me with the miniature mini things, the ministerial things, the smallest of small, uh, the little things. I want that. Sir. And if we're not faithful in the little things, uh, you're not going to be faithful in much. If we grumble about the small things, uh, you're going to grumble about those things that you perceive are, are weighty and matters. Is this what he requires of me? Is this what he expects? I must do the work while it is daylight. He says in the next verse, as long as I am in the olam, in the world, as long as I am in this body, he says, I am the ma'o, oh, I am the light that caused the heart of Yisrael to rejoice. I am the light of the world. As long as the power of the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach is in this world. And we have seen from the ninth hour that we're in how darkness has filled the earth. We have seen the rising of this anti-HaMashiach spirit. We have seen the proliferation of one of the most damnable beings Created out of a mind that was empty, was shava, a mind of vanity. And this, this damn freak we call Jesus Christ. That's what we have seen. To take away the adoration of Yoshua HaMashiach. So we see this damnable bohemant that is foul. He is a damn wicked lie. I don't apologize for my... Dramatics. It is not a drama, but I do not apologize. I believe in all of my ignorance what I teach. And so my voice elevates itself without control. We have seen the rise of this kingdom of darkness. We have seen the disputing. Surely he was not the son of Yah. Surely he is not the power of the perfection of Yah's Torah. And so we have seen this darkness of the mind set in upon a people. You will know that it's darkness because there's one vital verse in Torah. I'm going to read two. And I must read from the Old Covenant and the Brit Hadassah, the Renewed. That we may understand the concept of what is said here in the book of Romeo, the book of Romans. This was not written to the nations that we perceive were the Goim or the Gentiles. It was written unto a mindset that had become so in tune with the fiber of the Gentiles' logic of thinking. That you cannot tell Yisrael from the filthiest of the heathens. Can we tell a bath of Tizayon from those that are full of darkness? Let me tell you this little incident before I proceed. We were there at one of the places that we retrieve some of the supplies here. And I walked past this vehicle and I saw on the headrest, tribe of Yehuda or Yahuda Shebet. And so I was somewhat impressed and intrigued because I thought it, it somewhat infatuated me. The truck was running outside of this domain, no one in the truck. So I pulled the vehicle to see who was in the truck. 
And so as I was loading our supplies, I saw this young man come to the vehicle. My intentions were to pursue him, and he turned around quickly and he left. So as I finished loading the materials that we had purchased, I went in the store. And I said, ma'am, there was a young man of this description. He just came in. Which way did he go? She said, he went that way. So I go down to that end of the store, and I say to the lady, ma'am, can you assist me, please? There was a young man of this description. Can you tell me? One told me he came this way. She said, sure, he came this way, but he went back that way. So I'm somewhat puzzled now. <clears throat> so which way do I go? I went that way. I had come from that way. So I stood still. We need to stand still to hear the voice of God. So I stood still, and there he was with the manager of the store. Now the manager knows me, because in his arrogance, one day he used a verbiage toward me. And I said, no, sir, you don't do that, sir. I say, you look as though you're a man of, an, of educational uh, uh, stamina. Oh, sure, I have three degrees. And said, and then you must understand your customer's base that you will not relegate unto them such a descriptive superlative to denounce them as though that you're not appreciative unto them. So I said, uh, of that excellent education, you do a little research. And he did. Some weeks he came and said, uh, you're right. Oh, I knew I was right. And so when he sees me today, he tends to shy away from me. So he was with him. So I walked quickly back to the back of the enterprise. And he was in this area. The door was closed. I said, sir, could you do me a favor? One of the employees, could you tell that young man there that there is someone that will love to speak to him for a moment? Well, he, he was a contractor. How do I know? Because he told me. I asked the question. I said to my issue, I said, a young man that, that's doing the electrical contractor work here, he was from Hawaii. I said, he, he must have an engineering degree because an establishment like this, they just don't hire anyone off the street. You understand? So he looks at me, physically built young man, very strong looking. I said, sir, my friend, I said, I, I was aware of the sign you had on your headrest. It says, uh, tribe of Yehuda, Yehuda Shebet. He, he, so he looks at me, he said, yeah. And so from there, I began to talk. So he says to me, do, do you have a place of gathering? He is just coming to the knowledge of the run. No, I didn't overwhelm him and try to show him. I said, here is our cards. Go to the website. Yeah. I couldn't get away from him. The conversation was more extense than that. Immediately, he pulled out his cell and he went to the website. The wisdom of Yah that speaks profoundly in this hour. He followed me all the way back out to my vehicle. And there we had conversation. Our light, the wisdom of our light must shine. It is not of the abundance of your speech. It is the preciseness uh, of each word that it makes uh, an impact upon the bosom uh, of those that have the ability to shemak. He will contact me. Believe me. He will. The young man will. He said, I just moved here recently. I'm from the state of Hawaii. So I inquired, are you one of the general contractors? What do you do? You, you do the electrical work? I know that's what he did. He said, yes. I do the electrical work. Sam's and Walmart will not hire a group like us. Two countries. That's a fact, all right? The process is so monumental uh, 
that you just don't come in and work for a corporation like that. So undoubtedly, the young man had some expertise that was sound. He had credentials that were solid. Why am I saying that? That our credentials should be solid. They should be overwhelming on the natural concept of the natural man. They should see the more the light of great beauty that shines from us because we have a Torah of wisdom and we are a people, a special people above all nations. Above all nations. Not some nations, but above all nations. And something is wrong. Not only is that in the beauty of our intellectualism, our physical beauty, yeah, we have a physical beauty too. Should we have a physical beauty? I don't know what the world has done to us. Made us look silly, made us look foolish. Our women look foolish, our men look stupid. It's just a fact. Because we're impressed with the world and how they do things and we want to do it the way they do it. I don't. And that's a fact. I'm different than this world. And I want it to be seen when I go. People see it all the time. I walked in this place the other day and the man looks at me and he starts smiling. He said, that's all right. He just looked at me. He was sitting there. He just looked at me. He's probably about 45. He said, that's all right. That's how you're doing, sir. Everything's all right. Oh, I know we don't think that that means anything and we think that I'm verbosing. I'm telling you. He simply looks at me and says, that's all right, man. It's straight. He didn't know anything about me. My first time ever seeing that man, his first time ever seeing me. We are a statement beyond statement. I want you to hear this, the reason why by the ninth hour, and that word ninth or the numerics of night, it equates with the final hour of judgment. And we are in the Akharith, the final hour of judgment. We're in the time of the Akharun, the time of judgment, a time of preciseness, a time whereby we must identify the filth because when the power of that revelation comes of Yeshua, you that are filthy, you will be filthy still. So we must get it right. What is the inhibitor of that which causes us to fall and to falter in the truth of Yah? Or why is it that darkness has captivated our minds? And not the testimony of light. I give us a simple reason here in the book of Romeo, chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two verses I want to read. I want to read verse 18, and I will proceed from there. It says in verse 18, it is amazing because I know this is my handwriting in this book, and I made a little footnote. Probably 25 years ago in this book here. I've had this book for 35 years. My ignorance is pronounceable, yet there was a lighter truth to this. I didn't understand what the Shemach of Yah was. It says, for the wrath of Yah. And I indicated, quote, Yoshua is the wrath of Yah. That's what it says here. Of course, I did not write that. I wrote, quote, Jesus is the wrath of Yah, unquote. So I wrote that there to indicate the profoundness of what this Shomach is. Uh, it's his judgment. And we'll understand that as we proceed. Uh, for the wrath of Yah is revealed uh, from Hashemah against, who, against all those that are ever, that are evil, their minds are full of folly. Evel is a man that uh, defies uh, the wisdom of Yah. It is a man that mocks. It's a woman that mocks the judgment of Yah. They take nothing serious. They're silly. They're immature. It never ceases to amaze me. I don't care what you say to men, women. Uh, if you say anything that indicates them or indict them, uh, they will say, oh, no, no, I don't know. I, I did that a year ago. I did it two months ago. They never say, well, where am I? 
They always got a reason. He says that the wrath or the Torah or the word of God is revealed real from heaven against all that are evil, all that are unrighteous, all that have not the living Torah in them of men. Of men. How do you know that they're unrighteous? He tells us in the next line of the sentence, comma, who hold the truth of Yah in Evel. They have purported a damn deceitful lie, Jesus Christ. This is the mind that was the spirit after the ninth hour that began to permeate in the minds of the people. Surely this was not the Hamashiach. So what they have done has created this damnable, despicable lie that has amassed himself not in truth. Jesus Christ is not the master of truth. He's a damn lie. So they began to purport this, promote it. There's nothing about Jesus Christ's teachings uh, that dwell in truth. Uh, their minds have been darkening who hold the truth in heaven. Uh, they hold the truth. They conceal the truth. They hide the truth. They denounce the truth. They hide the truth. They will not talk truth. They will not speak from the wisdom of the mitzvah. They speak from a dark mind. They speak from emotions. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. Why? What does the truth reveal? It tells us in the next verse. I don't want to read all this because I will show you some things. While there is no healing, there are no profound miracles in this hour. These damn Jesus Christ thumpers by the power of hell. This is a demonic demology. There's one reason for the more faith of Yah. What do you think Yah did and performed the great miracles? Do you understand that? No, we don't. We've been taught by a deception of damnable lies. I will show you. I got a story I will tell you too. They hold the truth in Evel. They hold the truth of Yah, not with the wisdom of Yah. These are men, when you speak any kind of judgment, any truth to this bath, they get angry. They exalt themselves. They despise wisdom. That's an evil man. He despised any kind of wisdom. That's an evil woman. I don't care how she presents herself. The subtleties of her guileness, her talk, her conversation, it doesn't mean a damn thing to Yah. She is an evil woman. You shall know them by the fruit, by the perea. That one bears forth Yisra'ah. That's how we identify Yisra'ah. Now with some false delusional thing we call fruits. It is not the peri of Yah. You don't have to appreciate me. That's all right. They, they didn't even appreciate Moshe and Haran, did they? So if you don't appreciate me, that's all right. I'm not that emotional. I need no motivation. I do what I do. I, I don't need no one to motivate me. I don't need anyone to propel me. I, I really never have. Because I was never one that was in tune with the mass of the crowd. I walked different. And I didn't want to look like the rest of the schoolboys. So I didn't act like the schoolboys. So it makes me no difference. Listen to this. I want to proceed down to verse 21. Hallelujah. Is this a people that did not understand Yah's wisdom? Yah says, because when they yada, what nation, what am, knew Yah? It was not the Philistines or the Hittites. It was not those of the Gentile, the heathenistic nature. He said, because when they yada, when they experienced the power of Torah, when they seen the depths of the might of Torah, listen, and when they yada, they experienced Yah, when they understood the depths of the might of Almighty Yah, it says this, 
when they knew Yah, they magnified and honored him not as the most impeccable dominant one. When they knew Yah, they saw the hand of Yah on that stake. They did not magnify. We see the testimony of Yahshua where we see it on the stake of one another's lives. And then when we see the hand of that, then we don't magnify Yah. We don't esteem him. We don't bless him for the beauty of our Ach. We don't bless him for the beauty of our Rachot. We don't bless him for the beauty of our being the children. We don't bless Yah for that. When they knew Yah, when they understood the depths of Torah, when there was a light of Torah revealed unto them, they did not magnify Yah. We don't magnify Yah. We see the hand of God's great work, his mighty work, uh, the work of simplicity. There is no in awe of that. We're not in awe of Yah. They magnified him not. Neither were they Toda, Hudu, Yada. They were not Yada. There was not a praise of thanksgiving with great excitement. That's what Yada is. Yada, 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 Yada. Yada, Yada, for Yasir Hamashi. Yada, 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 Yara ya for my life, health and strength, Luya, Luya for Israel. Yara ya, yara ya, yara ya. You see, they did not move with excitement. There were no, there was no euphoric of great excitement. When you reveal the power of truth, they did not get excited. We don't get excited. Oh, I just get excited. I tremble at your sight. You are a fat out, wicked, damn liar. And I will tell you to your face, and I'm not fearful to tell you that, you are a damn liar. If you go to the doctor, he tells you you're going to die. Then you tremble. There's no money healing today, Yisrael. And the only way that my... I hope we're going to be or experience the faith of Yah. We must hear. That's it. And it must come at the ma'ah of Torah. The excitement of delight when we hear the Torah. We tremble at the proclamations of man. But we don't tremble at the proclamation of Yah. He said, they did not honor me. They did not give hoodoo unto Yah. Why? Because they became vain, they became sharp, they became empty in their imagination. In their thought, their concept, their purpose, they became vain in their thought. And I find that one of the most prevailing power among men. They're very vain because they think that their worth is of great essence. We stink like damn dogs. Yeah. Same thing with women. Yeah. You think your value is of great essential. It is not. Yeah. We have only of any value because Yah has made us valuable uh, unto Him. Yeah. But just like the grass of the earth that when it fades, uh, so does our youth, our vitality. It all fades. They became vain in their imagination, their purpose, uh, their plans, and what they invented. Uh, he says, and then, not the evil, but the evil, uh, their foolish hearts, their foolish love, the foolish concepts, they became, uh, or they was, they became uh, hashak. They became darkened. They became dark. And the thoughts of this generation, it is dark. And the power of that testimony 
the light of Yahshua, it cannot proceed from a dark place. There must be light. We are the salt of the earth. When the salt loses its fragrance, it is tough for nothing to be thrown out and trodden on the foot. Then Yahshua says, you are the light. You're the maw of the earth. The light of the wisdom of God cannot be hidden. This is a nation of people that have been catered to about the damn dumbness of this wicked nation. In hell we look dumb, we act dumb, we purport the same dumbness of this damn wicked nation. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we're so lethargic and lazy and we're shiftless and we love to sleep. Their foolish minds became darkened. Their minds are so foolish that everything comes out as darkened. There's no light of inspiration, no light of wisdom. There are no mighty miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. You look at some of these faggots out here. These effeminate damn boys talking about their healing. There is no power of Yah in that. But I do believe that there's a strength and a power there. Because Yah has given the Olam into the hand. That's what Eob says. He has given it into the hand of the Rasha, the wicked men. And when wicked men rule, there is darkness. When the Sadiq man rule, what? There is Shalom. There is Shalom. There is Shalom. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been given unto the hand of wicked men. Men that are Rasha, that are criminals against the acts of Yah, they're already judged. You can pray all you want to for them. You can pray for your damn wicked sons, your damn wicked daughters. Uh, nothing is going to change. Yeah. Man that is Rasha, he defies the wisdom of Yah. He mocks that uh, he is a man that is evil. And their hearts became darkened. From the day that ninth hour, the heart of man became darkened. We see what we call the dark period of, uh, of, the, uh, of the time of man. Where there was no knowledge, they would say there was no form of, quote, God worship, unquote. But there has always been gods. Jesus Christ is a damn God. A God has no significance. A God is an imagination and a creation out of the imagination and the folly of wickedness of a man's mind. So that's why because you retain that God nature, you love to hear things that are full of folly and you want to do things that are against the Torah of Yah. You cannot say you love Yah when we don't guard his mitzvah. Man says he loves him, he keeps not his commandments, he's a liar. We must guard that. We must guard Yah's truth. We must stand and guard it with our lives. No, you don't hear this on the YouTube. Man wrote me the other day. I showed my Raphael what he said. Of course, the statement is not true. He says, when I listen to you, quote, when I listen to you, you make me think of Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Not in a bad sense, but the ability to draw the attentiveness of the minds of the people. Well, I can't do that here with a little small crowd. And so I know your statement is wrong, my friend, and undoubtedly he's listening too. I certainly don't want to be compared with a heathenistic Gentile like Hitler. I'd rather he said that certainly the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach is in you. For it shall cause Yisrael to hear. And their foolish mind. What is even anything that we participate in and do and do? That's not moderated by wisdom of Yah. It must be moderated by the wisdom, the hukmah of Yah. That's why I say all the time to the elderly women, to the imma and all of you all, you think you're getting by, but you're not. I say to the elderly men that are full of damn folly and stupidity, we don't give a damn that we teach the young men the way of Yah. 
not just in our talk, but the way we walk and the way we stride in our functionary activities, the way we function among people, that they see the beauty of that light. We don't see a damn thing in this hour, Yisrael. And so when you're in the midst of the company, they want to hear you talk. They want to hear you reverberate the Torah of Yah and bring forth the excellence of Almighty Yah. But the men today, the elderly men, are full of damn folly. And the elderly women, they're silly as hell. They love to clown. There's no strength of beauty in them at all. As Bishop would say, you don't walk tinkling, you draw no attention to yourself. You should walk in a way that no man is drawn with any attention unto you. And when what is, he sees the beauty of that expression. Not because you're twisting your ass. Not because your dress is tight. Not because... I said to my Isha the other day, I saw a man. And I said, you know, Raphael. I mean, I don't despise my symmetry as a man, even my age. I don't despise my masculinity, my muscularity. You say what you want to. Every man wants to be muscular. Men are liars. Oh, I don't want to look like that. You're a damn liar. Just be honest. Every man wants to have that distinguished masculinity to his physicality. But they will lie. So I would want you're a liar. And every woman wants to have, I will use the word among you, other diaspora, a, 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 a voluptuous look. Everything is proportionate. Everything is right. Every woman wants to have that. And so I said to my Isha, I said, you know, Raphael, I don't, my physicality as a man, I mean, I don't have no complaints about it. I said, but you see that man, the way he dressed, I would be ashamed even with my physicality to go out looking like that. I said, I would be ashamed to dress like that. I would be ashamed to expose myself, and I can put on a tank top and all that, and I would not look back. I can wear some shorts and, and no socks and all of that. I said, I would not even expose myself to that. I would not even want to even present this. I said, I would be ashamed, Raphael. I would. I would be ashamed. I would be ashamed to dress like that. And you see old fools dressing like that. You see old foolish women with lacquer things on, 260 pounds. You see men with guts hanging over there with shorts and tank tops on and look like a damn fool. And if I went that way, I could draw attention if I just wanted to do I know I could. Yeah, I want my beard. I'm not going to dye my beard. Shimbri tell me, well, your hair looks as though it's red. Well, you know, I did. I tried some of this medicated shampoo. And you know what, my bath, I left it on too long. And it tells you precisely this long. Then I put some tropical oils in there. And I noticed one day, I say, what in the world? And so when my barber cuts my hair, he's always nudging me. Oh, I can't see it back there. Don't say that, man. I said, certainly, if I was going to be vain, I certainly would not die red. I said, I would die black and get me some black lines across here and make that beard, oh, and put that black here, and that would be tough. And put that black line there and all this gray and white, but just make it black all the way around here. Just give me a nice, smooth line and make it black. I saw one in the pulpit here like that. I'm like, what was all that? For that line of Hathaway, I said, that is just magnificent. I said, that can't be. Your hair can't grow that. Nah, nah, nah. So if I want to do that and then just make the top, you no, know, I don't want to cover up all the gray of my mustache. Just get the top black, you know, and just make it all accent. You know, look nice and black. Now, that's the way I would go. And, 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 and let this grow a little gray in here and just kind of get this, just a little black up here and just, oh, man. Huh? That's the way to go. I said it would die red. That's a fact. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's the way I would go. You see these folks today, one day their hair look dingy brown, the next day it's blackish. Years ago I saw this man come in the barber shop, his hair was black as that stool. And so he was boasting, man, I know I'm fine. I know I'm a tough looking man. He had a gut bigger than mine. I know I'm fine. 
Look at, look at me, man. Yeah. And then the barber said, yeah, you got enough dye in your beard to dye your whole head. So I said to the barber, what did you say? He said, oh, yeah, they, that dye today, they, you put it in, it stays like that. It grows out, but, you know, it'll stay black. I said, ah. So I said, his beard can't be that black. It's just too black. So I certainly would not dye red. Moving on, yes, right, huh? I'm vain, but I'm not that vain. I'm empty. When I use the word shove in vain, I'm empty. Anything that I perceive about myself is full of emptiness. I said to my Isha the other day, I said, baby, you know what? When I look at the mirror, when I look at myself, I said, I got to be a damn fool to really think that I'm that fine. I said, I look at my eyes. I look at my... I said, I, I just don't think like that. I just, honestly, I don't... Well, you're so fine and everything. No, I'm a damn fool to think like that. I said, I got to be a damn fool, baby. I said, because I see the reality of what I look like. I see the reality of what I look like. You may see something different. That's how stupid we are. You know you look tough. You, you, you look a mess, man. That's the way we think. I said, baby, I got to be a sick man. That's what I said. That's what I said. And I didn't say that to placate me. I'm real. And it's a fact. I don't kid myself that way. I'd rather him beautify me with the ruach of Ana, humble meekness without fight against Torah. I'd rather be covered with that spirit. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. He says that their foolish hearts became darkened. Their minds became overwhelmed by the folly of their own flesh. Is there anything that resonates that same capacity out of the mouths of the Navi'im, the prophets? Well, I'll direct your attention to that quickly in the book of Jeremiah. 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 <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 16. And this is a prophecy concerning the great judgment of Almighty Yah. That he exalts the nation to make shuba, teshuva, to repent. Because in this prophecy of Jeremiah, chapter 13, verse 16, he is saying, because of the vileness of their ways, that all shall suffer the great miseries of the great afflictions that shall come upon them. And because of the darkness of this generation, you don't see mighty miracles. There is no power to pray today. We don't assemble ourselves to pray. We assemble ourselves to move that period of time from this time to that time that we may proceed to, to our own activities, Yisrael. So there is no power of Pala. There is no great strength of prayer today. There is no crying unto Yah. And all this damn Jesus talk is the damn lie. There is no power of healing from Yah in Jesus' name. But it does come from the forces of hell. I believe that. Moving quickly. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 16. It says give. Kabot, give great honor and esteem. To Yah your Abba. Now let's examine our hearts. Do we do that? Do we honestly give great kabot unto Yah? That we honor him. We, we follow and we pursue the activities of his commands. Do we do that? Very little. It is so minuscule that we can't remember what we have done for Yah. Something has got to be drastically wrong with us when we can continue to do the same things that we know that it is diametrically opposite to what Torah commands us. Something is wrong in our minds, Israel. And the reason we function that way be because of iniquity, because of our ovon, because of our ways. And, and, and this love for Yah, it gets cold. It becomes distance. We don't really love Yah. And we don't love Yah, we can't love each other. Yeah. And the reason we don't love each other is because we don't love ourselves. Give out unto Almighty Yah your bar before, before now, before he caused uh, this hashak. Not hoshak, but hashak. It's an ignorance that is so dark. It is an obscurity whereby one cannot see the hand. Those that Yeshua said, when the darkness fell, those that were sitting, they stayed there until the darkness passed. 
And we're in a dark hour of great darkness. We're still sitting on our eyes. We're not up laboring. We're not, we know we're in the dark season. Because in the dark season, what is the one thing you like most? You like to sleep, don't you? And that's what we love to do. We love to sleep. We love to sleep. And that's why we're full of poverty because we love to sleep and slumber. When you eat, what you like to do sleep. I was thinking of the day that uh, when my Ach Yosef and I go to the garden, I just love working in the garden. I really do, Yisra'ya. You don't even know how much I love that type of labor. I'd rather do that than to build. Because as I weed, I see the prototypical type of me, my mind. I don't put a heavy burden on my ark. He's hoeing one side of a row. I'm hoeing four rows at a time. And I stay up with him. And I get every weed. Understand the philosophical of that? I get every weed. Oh, you missed that one. I'll get it. I may not get it today, but tomorrow it may grow a little. I get it. I get every weed. So I look to get every weed, although I miss weeds all the time. But I got every weed. I don't spend time and energy trying to find a weed. I don't have to do that and find the corruption in me. I see my vow and my damnable ways against you. Something is sick in your damn mind when you cannot accentuate between your vow ways. What you see my ways, go to hell, man. You wicked vow Jezebel, go to hell. You got something that is so distinguished, your damn mouth is all you got. A filthy theft that's pure venomous lies and corruption. That's what you are. So that's why I can say it against him, to him now. If I say it against him, I, he's with me. Hallelujah. We all together, I do the talking. I want to impart to him everything I know. Everything is of value. I want their walk to be just like mine. I want them to stride like me. Hallelujah. I tell them all the time, one day I'll be gone. You got to stand strong. You stand strong with the leaders and walk with them. I tell them that all the time. I know it's a few. Because I know my extended stay of time is not as long as his or his. By the way, I do get on Akshimri. Uh, of course, he looks in my head. I look at his and I said... Uh, my friend, do I detect, is that white or gray? Oh, and they began to proliferate. How about that? I don't want to see the beard dyed black. I said to uh, Yosipi, I said, Yosipi, what? that beard is awful black. Wow, this reflection of that uh, beautiful skin complexion he has. Black, he's young now, but it's going to get gray one day. I shall, my friend. I shall. Yeremiah says, Give out unto Yah before he caused darkness, this house shack, and before your feet stumble, before your feet stumble, now listen, before your feet stumble upon the Nefshef. The Nefshef is the twilight. See, we're right there at the twilight of this darkness. Before your feet stumbles uh, in the evening twilight, Upon the high place they had the mountains. Uh, before your feet stumble because you think you know the very intricates of the power of Yah's great wisdom and knowledge. Uh, before your feet stumble. And while you look for light. And while you look for the ma'or. While you look for the power of Torah. While you look for the truth of Torah. While you desire the wisdom of Torah. Yah says... Uh, he turns it, Yah turns it uh, into the shadow of Maveth, uh, of death. Uh, you die spiritually, prematurely. You die physically, prematurely. You just die. He turns it into death. Uh, and make, he uses the words, uh, Araphel. Uh, he caused gross darkness uh, to befall your mind. Uh, that you cannot sense the light. You cannot sense the smallest of the fragment of light as it tries to shine through the veneer of this dark mind. That is why when our mind becomes so dark, we don't want to talk about the power of God. We want to talk about foolish things. We want to talk about things that are absent from truth. 
We don't want to rejoice and give Yah honor. Well, the sisters talking about Yah, we don't want to hear that. We get sleepy. But let someone talk about something that is full of foolish. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way we are. I will never stop saying this. I can't stand the presence of foolish men. I don't even like talking to them. That's why I don't spend much time with many men. It's not many men before me. Be silly. Because I know the folly of men. I can't stand when men, when you talk, there's always a little laughter. That is one thing as a young boy. I, I, don't, I just don't do that. But I know it's not funny, but I'm not laughing because, no, you, it's suggested that you should stop any of us. That that's part of our character. We sh you shouldn't do that. I've never liked that as a young boy. I've never liked that. Nothing more despising than a foolish man, and I despise a silly woman. I despise that. She's always laughing. I hate that. I tell my woman, I don't want to hear your voice. No laughter around me. And then if I walk up on you, you're doing that, then it's a, it's a ball game, baby girl. I don't play that. I've never liked that. It's something about that that is, it is so insidiously dark. You get quiet on me, huh? Don't like what I'm saying, but that's all right. I'm happy. You're not laughing because you're happy. You're full of folly. Do you laugh? Well, this is the time when I laugh. It's not laughter. I don't find things that funny. <laughs> I don't listen to jokes because they're stupid. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't go that way. And there's nothing more vile than a silly woman always laughing. Don't go that way with me, heifer. I'll cut your fat head off. I'm talking to you. I'll cut your wicked head off. I've been married for 36 years nearly. We have never sat around, she and I, with laughter. Oh, we have time to there's a little laughter. But just clownish laughter, accommodating or accompanying ourselves with others that love to laugh. I've never done that. Because when, as a young couple, everyone thought that we were much more mature than those that were older than us. And those that had mar married 8, 10, 12 years, uh, they looked to us as though that we had a beauty about marriage and, and an understanding that they didn't have. And that's just the honest truth. I'm not saying that to be boastful, but it was just that way. And that's the honest truth. Hallelujah. He says, before... He turned, while you look for light, he turned it into the shadow of death and made arafil. He caused gross darkness, ignorance, stupidity. When a man is in darkness, when he doesn't understand the hard speech. When Yah talks about the hard speech, uh, he talks about an arafal. The hard speech of Yah, it is a hukmah. It is a hoshak. Forgive me, it's a hoshak. It means that it is the wisdom that is so profound, uh, it cannot be uh, expressed in the natural conscience of man. He has no ability uh, to exact from that wisdom. Uh, so he'll look at you crazy looking like. He doesn't understand the speech. It's a dark speech. It's a speech of hard saying. It's a speech uh, whereby many men cannot interpret it. Uh, they don't have the wisdom to interpret it. It uh, is and Yah says, I'm going to turn while you look for light. Uh, I'm going to turn. Uh, I'm going to turn your light into gross darkness. Uh, it is that you will believe a lie before you believe the truth. Uh, because your mind will be turned away from the truth. Uh, you will not be excited about truth. Uh, when you're excited about truth, you will magnify Yah. Yeah. You will lift him up. Yeah. You can't sit all staunch. And I'm not talking about that damn mess that we learned from the whole house. Got a quickening. You got a wicked spirit, what you got, man. Uh, 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 uh. That's a damn lie. Woo! Woo! That's wickedness. It's not, y'all. I don't care what nobody say. It's wrong. I'm going to show you what the Torah talks about. There's a certain cry. 
And the only way it can be expressed is the ringing of the heads. <laughs> you see the old folks, oh, yeah. <laughs> they would do that. And you are so precise. I like that. I like studying this book. Because I see the simplicity of things. And I, my mind goes back when they would just... <laughs> they did that. I'll show you why. We need to get back to it. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to make it a Raphael gross darkness. He's going to cause even the shadows of death to become gross. What is the death? What is the mavith? It is the mind of one dying prematurely before Yah because one will not enact the moral counsel disciplines of Yah that began here in the mitzvah, the commandment. We will not walk in the commandments. We will not love Yah with all heart, mind, with everything one possesses. And we will not love his neighbor as he loves his oneself. You know you love yourself when you judge yourself constantly. When you critique your mind, your ways. A man loves himself when he bathes, doesn't he? Don't you women love yourself? Oh, I know I said I, I would not bathe if I didn't have to, but I love bathing. I like to bathe. But I will not waste the time. You understand? I will not waste the time to eat. eat to, eating to me is somewhat boring. I will not take the time to eat. I will not exercise and nothing like that. Because I have uh, uh, caused such damage to my natural being, uh, I got to redeem the time uh, whereby the substance of my life uh, will persist for the moment. Uh, that I may express the power of the great Rafa, the healing of Yahweh. Here's my mind, here's my thoughts, here's my will, my desire, because I read and I hear what the ox say. There's nothing more profound than a man when he has the ability to hear. But a man can hear. Nothing more profound. There's nothing more devastating on a man when he can't hear, when he loves to talk. Nothing more devastating on a woman. When you find a woman that loves to talk, hell, run from her. Get away. I don't care who you are. And especially when they talk about non-essential. You have one that telling you, nah, baby girl, you're not right. You're so stubborn and wicked. That's the one you need to hear. The Musa, the counsel of you. No, no, young Ak, you're not going to do that. A young man wrote me 27 years old, tells me he's an organic farmer and all of these things. And I replied to him, you're 27. I know the zeal of a 27-year-old man. Listen more. Just listen to me. Because I know you think you know everything. Old men are that way. They think they know everything. You're not the master of the, uh, of the intelligence of Torah. Neither am I, neither are you. And you're stupid to think that you understand the parameter of every aspect. So every time someone says something, you go read a few scriptures, you think you understand. That is damn utterly stupidity. And don't come to me with one or two verses trying to disprove what I'm saying. Don't come to me with that. When you come to me, you better come with the fullness of, of the book, the volume of the book. I'm a tenacious man. You understand what that means? Everything I do, there's a zeal and a zest. I do everything what I do. I don't care what it is. Even when I don't feel like it, I do it with an excitement. I always do that. I've always been that way. I've never needed motivation. Never needed anyone to motivate me. Get up. Come on, you get up in the morning. Come on, we're going to do No, you don't have to do that for me. Never. I've never needed that. Because I love me. I love me a whole, whole lot. So I don't need you to motivate me. Hallelujah. Can I proceed? I shall, whether you allow me or not. He's going to cause gross darkness upon us. We're in this hour. There are no Rafa. Our bodies, not only are they deceiving us, they're forsaking us. We have sown to the flesh, and of the flesh we're going to reap corruption. No way to deny that. There was a reason for the great healings. I'll get to that. But listen to this in Shirak. Shirak. Write this down, the book of Shirak. 28, verse 3. The question is asked by the wise counsel of the teacher. 
the Murray of Yisraya in the University of Yerushalayim. It says, does a man harbor of or anger is one that his countenance, his, his thoughts express, his verbiage, the twitching of his mouth, his eyes. Does a man harbor anger and sinna that he harbors uh, this hatred? Uh, the word sinna, when Yah uses the word sinna, he's talking about this which is exceedingly. You see it in one's expression? You see it in one's walk. It's almost like a man hating his son-in-law that he despises the presence of it. It's almost like Yisra'ya hating one another. So when we see each other, with this growling woof countenance we possess. That's what it's like. There's a man. That's one. Hear this. Does a man harbor anger and hatred against another? Does he do that? And if he does, there's a reason why. Does he do that and yet this man seeks for the Rafa, the healing of Yah? You tell me the damn Jesus thumpers uh, say they know Yah? And yet the Baptist has anger against other Baptists. The white Baptist against black Baptists. Uh, yeah, you coward. I will always use the, de the, de the descriptive expression that is impregnated in the minds of a people in this nation. I'm not going to shun it. I don't have a sense of uncomfortableness because I deal with it every day. It's a fact that we must eradicate out of us. And I'm, I'm not afraid to talk about it. So can a man have hatred? Can you both have this great sin, ah, this dislike, this taste for Yisra'ya? I love this arm. Um, Although this arm is strong, I'm right-handed, but my left is much stronger. My left arm is stronger than my right arm. My grip on my left is much stronger. So does a man hate, does he harbor, does he cause this to be in, in, infested in his mind and his heart uh, against anyone, and yet he seeks Yah for Rafa, for Mufay, for healing? There's nothing. Yoshua made a profound statement. He made a profound statement. He says, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He did not say sonne. He did not use that. Uh, he used the word sota, 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 sota. It is the word that implied there would be great animosity and great dislike. There would be a, a seething dislike for you. That's what he meant. You can hate someone sonne and don't even hear like he said, but when this uh, sata, the sata, it is an animosity that he, even when you don't see them, it causes you to get angry. So you think you're going to have that in your bosom against Yisra'ya? That you disenfranchise? We, we, come on, we should never disenfranchise each other. So we see Yisra'ya scattered abroad. We get the light of your sure in us, even though those light may not shine like your light, you will know that they are Yisraya. Yeah. Well, you always say you don't even interact with people. Don't be silly. I know how to interact with people better than you. I just don't play with people. That's just the difference with me. When I have a sense to confront or to speak to this man, I do. Because I know there's something in that individual that it's, I, I like. And that's a fact. So how can you say you love Yah? You have the healing power, you can pray, and you have this satam, this animosity so intense. It's a dislike, it is expressed in your countenance. I don't care what you all say, we must get control of this right here. Our pony and our mouths, because out of the abundance of the heart, the left, the mouth speaks. And so our mouth forms itself. When a child, you tell something to a child, they go, I see it all the time. There's one little one that I don't have to worry about seeing that expression. Hallelujah. And then they flop back and that one does this. Can't go around the Torah of Yah. Hallelujah. So we cannot harbor that in our bosom. And this is a nation that hates Yah. We can't have this hatred for Yah. Can a man? 
Can he harbor anger of and hatred, this sin, this exceedingly dislike one toward another? Can we have this hatred against Yahshua and seek for the healing of Yah? We don't want to hear the testimony of Yahshua. We don't gather and sing the songs when we're working to refresh, uh, to strengthen one another, to make beautiful songs from our hearts. Uh, we do it with a pretense and a falseness uh, that even the singing doesn't even sound well. I don't have to pretend to sing. I'll just sing. I don't have to worry about uh, the, the, uh, the sound perception of the ears of others. I don't. I draw from a well that is not shallow. I draw from the excitement of Torah when I say I, I draw from the testimony of Yahshua. I draw from that well. So I'm not ashamed for my voice to be heard. I'm not ashamed to sing. And at times I'm in the field, I sing. And I sing the whole time I'm in the field. Because it revives. It brings about a strength. It brings about an assurance and an excitement. And when one does that hell, you don't look for a way out. You look for a way in to labor for you. I don't try to get around work. But your safe said to me yesterday, I, 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 I'll take care of that. I said, well, yo, you don't have to. You don't have to begin weeding the corn. You can wait. Let's do this. Take care of the other little thing. We're going to stop at 1.30. And so when I leave out, I saw this ark out there in the corn. And I fuss at you all the time. I do. And he knows it. Because I fuss at me the same way. Even worse than that. Because I'm going to get the point home to him. And I'm going to say it over and over and over and over. I do. Does y'all say the same thing over to us? And we are like little relentless children. We look at the children, of course, we whip their eyes. Yours going to whip your eyes the same way. You understand? Because we are as hard-headed as they come. Now, that doesn't mean you don't whip their eyes. You turn that little backside. Don't worry, he's going to get yours. You're not getting by. Because his judgment is not expediently exercised upon you, then our hearts began to become defiant. I'm nice. You're not nice. Nothing nice about any of us. What we must do, the same Shirach, chapter 17, verse 26, he says to Yisrael, turn again to the Most High. Let us go back to the way of the Torah. Then we will see the mighty power of his Rafa. That's his name, Rafaya. He's the healer of Yisrael. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from your iniquity. See, you don't see your oving, do you? You don't see your wicked ways. We don't see our corruption, Yisrael. That's why there are many sick among us and many are dead. Because we're eating the bread like Shaul says and we are unworthy of it. Don't, we have taken the body of your sure lightly. We have not eradicated the foundational principles of our wickedness uh, and the sins that dismantle and throw out the truth when we hear it. Uh, and we go back to the same damn dirty, filthy well. We drink from the same filthy system uh, all the time. Uh, our ways don't change our action. Uh, and we, in this hour, we need the healing of Yah, Yisrael. Yah. We need the confidence to trust Yah for his Rafa when they're doing every kind of damn thing and every kind of menace and everything. They're putting unclean animals and DNA of animals in the bodies of the people. It's just a fact whether we buy it or not. We've gotten fucked, but not because we love Yah. Damn it, we can't even fast a day. Don't try. And you that do fast, you want everyone to know it, to think you got something. You don't have a damn thing. You fast, you want nobody to know it. You want to wear your palastery so everyone can see your actions. You do it quietly. Oh, you're not eating today? Oh, I'm all right. We've grown with gross thickness of fatness. 
You can't even discipline your natural mind. How are you going to teach someone the disciplines of the spiritual things of God? I saw this man, someone subscribed to our YouTube site. I clicked on this, this, and this. And this man last night, he, he calls himself the master prophet. He's nothing but a voodoo worker. I watched this beast of unhumanity, if there is a word. Well, I know unhumane, but no humanity, that he had a gut like a damn pig. And he's guessing to tell people what's wrong with them. And he got the healing. He's going to send you the prescription. I get $500 for giving people this. I'm going to give it to you for free. And uh, in the midst of all of that, I must say, it, just, it was packed with silly women, laden with sin. They call him the master prophet and all. And this damn hog of a beast. You think that Yah is going to administer the power of his Torah to a damn beast like that? These good hog dogs of men, they're like beasts of the field. They don't even have the stamina to stand. They don't even have the stamina to work. They look like damn grotesque pigs, and they're talking about healing. You take a fat dog like T.D. Jakes and his damn Jesus talking, he's laying hands. You take an effeminate faggot dog like Benny Hinn and his prophet Jordan, this little effeminate boy, faggot Jerry Curls, and they're healing in the damn filthy name of Jesus. You can talk all the talk you want to, man. Now I have strength in your shoe. I don't rely upon no physicality of anything I possess. I'm alive because of him. I have no physicality. I have no strength of my own. Neither do you. And you're going to stand and minister the power of Yah's Torah when you're not living a life that is zippered Torah. You're not modest. You don't have no decency about yourself. You that think you're small, you think you have something. How you think you're going to minister the truth of Yah when you don't even have the wisdom of Yah doesn't shine in the light of your eyes. It doesn't form your features to represent that. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. You don't even love you. You love you, you will judge you. If you will judge yourself, you will need no man to judge you. You don't need no one to judge you if you judge yourself. We spend an enormous amount of time judging. Sure we do. Our minds are not healed. Our walk is not healed. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from your own iniquity, your own ovon. The reason you can't turn away from it is because our hearts are cold. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You come around that ark and you got a cold nature. You come around that ark and you're cold. You're wicked Jezebel. You vile thing of a person. I don't discriminate against Israel. Oh, I deal with silly men. I know they're immature. But I give them nothing to chew on. You say a little bit, you talk a little bit, and you move on. Well, I got a question. Well, let me ask you this. If I answer the question, will you believe it? Well, well, then I'm not going to answer it. Why would you come to me? When, when a student goes to a teacher, teacher, what's the answer? Well, I don't believe that. Well, then what is your scholarship, student? What is your intellectual proudness on this concept that you have mastered or deducted from, your, from a, a thorough research of this matter? What is your insight on it? Well, you know, well, 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 well. You don't even have the intellectual capacity. You have not labored to understand the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the minute details, the nuances. You have not. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from your iniquity. For he will lead you out of darkness into the light of health. You see, that's not what he does. He leads us into the light of health. He leads us into the light, into the rejoicing. Beloved, I would above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in top health. How? Even as your mind, your life, your body, even as your nephesh prosper. That doesn't mean you're right because you're not feeling no pains. 
That some of the most wicked men live to their 101. The drunkards and liars and fornicators and still want to have sex. At 89, they're trying to do something. Because this one is broke down and you, and you think because, oh, she all got help. That doesn't mean a damn thing. It doesn't mean one thing at all. Nothing at all. He's talking about the Rafa. He says, Yah said, he will lead you out of darkness, out of this darkness, into the light of his Rafa, his Mufith. That there is, uh, the Rafa of Yah is more than just your body being healed. There's a richness of the Isha. A man is happy. He knows Yah. I'm happy, happy, happy. Oh, I'm happy, happy, happy. Have the Isha. Shavia, oh, dear in me. Oh, I'm happy, happy, happy. Oh, I'm happy, happy, happy. Have the extra of ya deep in me, Israel. Right, oh, I'm happy, 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 happy. There's a richness of the oil of great gladness that flows. Help folks go to the hospital and get worked on. That doesn't mean they're happy. That doesn't mean they're healthy. It take away the lust of the beauty, the oil. Come on, Yisraya. Because everything they tell you, hell, you're going to die. You're sick, be young, repair. That's what they tell you. That's why there are no mighty miracles today. I don't care what these damn dogs say. And you're not coming to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Not to me. And those that want to identify with the true heritage of Hebrewism, then they're full of folly. Yah did not leave the Torah to be interpreted by the masses of Yisrael. He gave it unto one tribe, Levi. And Levi were the tribe, they were the members of the tribe to labor to study Torah. You don't go work the fields, you take care of the Torah, your family, one wife, you handle her, that's all you need. They had no heritage at all. So their mind was not deluded. It's only when they began to allow the darkness to see their heart because they became greedy and their own vain imagination, they began to seek their own and that's where the, where the trouble began. I've seen that in all these nearly 20 years here, when everyone began to seek their own, uh, you see the dark cloud of a pillar that begins to uh, envelop around us, and I've seen it. Uh, and they go seeking their own. The time you seek that, there's a darkness there. Hallelujah. He will lead us out of darkness and to his health. And there's one thing you must do you must sonne, you must hate to Abba abominations. Intensely. Do we intensely hate those things that are abominable unto Yah? And what the two Ibba represented, it was a mind that blasphemed Yah. It was a heart, if I may use the word for better wisdom or understanding of the matter, quote, religious, unquote. It was when one did not uh, show the great regard for the order of the house of Yah, when one, when it came to, quote, the religious moral uh, structure, unquote, uh, that they defied it without conscience of what they were doing. So you got to hate to Ibba, the things that cause your mind to be perverse and wicked. You got to hate that intensely. You got to hate that like you hate me. You got to hate that like you hate the Ark of the Hole. You got to hate it that way. You understand, Yisrael? You must hate it intensely. I hate that about me. I despise that. I hate things about me. I hate it. And I say it. And I confess it. I hate it. We show someone things that are hateful about them. They say, well, I don't do that. I, I did that uh, two uh, months ago, two weeks. Stop it. You don't even have any protocol to the matter. You don't even have any strength established. You really don't. Can I proceed a little further? Well, I shall. Hallelujah. We must hate the abomination intensely. We must hate the abomination intensely. We're not a people 
Yoshua said to the time of them, I make you fishermen of men. Did he say that? We're in the night season. No man is catching any fish. No man is catching any fish. No man is catching the fruit. No man. Oh, I got 300 people saved. I, I, I guarantee you, you got them saved. Under the cloak of your wickedness. That's a profound statement that was uttered here in John Yakahana 21.3. I want to move quickly because there's some things I must touch on today. John chapter 21 verse 3. In the night season, you're not going to be able to catch the truth. John Yakahana 21.3. John 21.3. It says, uh, Simeon Ketha says to them, he said, I'm going to fish. Yoshua made us fishermen of men. Bait them with truth. Not where they are. You don't bait the fish thinking what the fish want to eat. You, you bait according to what you know will work from experience. He says, Simeon Ketha says to them, I go fishing. And they said to him, we will also go with you. And they went forth. And they entered into the ship immediately. And that night, they caught abundantly. They caught nothing. When the night sees you're not catching anything. You're not catching anything. And they caught nothing. You're the time of darkness. You're not even catching the healing power of Yah's word that he sent forth to heal us. They caught nothing. For the night comes, uh, work while it is still light. For the night comes when no man can work. These are the metaphors of the patterns. And they went forth to catch. They went uh, in the ship. They went across, they sailed across the masses uh, of land and ocean uh, to make one proselyte. Uh, and then that will become twofold, uh, the child of hell. Uh, and that's what this deception of Jesus has done. They caught nothing. They were fishing all that night. They said, okay, we know we're going to catch some fish. I went out the other day with my friend. I said, I'm going to catch you some fish. And I'm boasting. And of course, there's a little uh, grub that I use. And I, Brother Lindsay said one day, try this, Reach. Because he was catching fish. And I said, I'm not trying that. Defiant, I got my thing. You use yours. And I, of course, he's bringing them in. I'm like, Brother Lindsay, he said, try one. I said, no, I don't want one. He's bringing in the fish. I said, Brother Lindsay, you got another one? And he said, yeah, try one. Of course, about the third cast, I'm catching fish. Whoa, got him, baby. Come on in. Oh, shake that fancy fin, little girl. And so that is one little grub I've used all the time, and it has worked, especially on what they call panfish. So I said to him, we're going to catch some fish. So I cast out nothing, walk around the pond, and I said, well, I got you, baby girl. Come on, shake that fancy tail. All right, come on in here. You're going to the hot oil. Sure. And of course, every time I catch a fish, I always give you other one. I've always, but that time, I'm, come on, here we go now. I got one. We're going to get you at least ten. Well, of course, I didn't catch anything else. I didn't catch anything else. Not one. Didn't even get another nibble. And by the way, I lost my jig. I didn't have it tied tight enough. And so I sling it out there, and there goes the jig. A zoop. Uh, they fish all night in the night season. You're not catching anything. In the darkness of the mind today, you're not catching the relevance of truth. So it doesn't heal your mind. It doesn't heal our thoughts. It doesn't heal our body. It is the power of the living testament of Yahshua that heals us. When we are broken, it heals us, Yisraya. It restores us to the place uh, where those things that the canker worm has devoured, it restores that, Yisraya. And they went and they caught no fish. When? In the night season. In the night season. For the night season come when no man can work. And we want to continue to pretend through this damned percept this damnable perception of Jesus Christ that we that they're healing. Oh, they have many healing. Oh, you're healing everybody. 
They're falling down like damn fools. The demonic power is saturating their minds. You can't even tell them the truth of Torah. They're so wicked. You got this little adulterous, filthy, wicked man. The Torah says a, a man that committed adultery with a woman, he saw me, he hates his own damn self. He hates his own nefesh. He hates himself. And if a man hates you, how can he love you? And that's a fact. I will come on. You got these adulterous pumping dogs and bastards uh, and the faggots like uh, 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 that bishop down there in Atlanta, uh, Eddie Long Dog. He's a long dog. This grotesquely beast with, with his bypass, gastro bypass, surgery, TD, the, TD, TD, the snake devil. Him and his woman. And tell everybody, well, you can lose weight. Hell, you got your belly clamped. You've been cut off, man. You went to Brazil to get it down to hide it, you big beast of a dog. You learn hands on someone. Oh, D.D. Jakes, he's bishop. And they buy the damn lies. They buy the damn lies. You cannot despise Yisra'ah and think that you're going to pray to Yah for health. You cannot have animosity against the house of Yisrael. Yeah. You wicked Jezebel, you little immature, imbulsome of a boy. You're not a man. I will not address you as a man. Yeah. And think that you're going to get the riches and curl the riches of Yah. You're a damn liar. Yeah. You can do it in Jesus. Yeah. Don't tell me the demons don't have power. Yeah. They just don't have the ak of Yah. What is granted unto them has been granted by Yah for the season of the night season. Not so that is Yisra'ah. We are Yisra'ah. It is the people that prevail by the power of the testimony. It is the people that prevail. That's what Yisra'ah is. It prevails against death and life. It even in life it prevails. Even in death it overcomes. Even in sickness it has the strength of Yah. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. They went forth into the ship and they caught nothing. So that little silly man that was here, going to Brazil, insulting on a people that he's going to get someone right. And he wasn't even right. No, I didn't dote over him. You can't dote over people like I don't dote over I don't dote over them. Well, the first thing I told him, you're a liar. I said, you're a flat-out liar. I told him he was a liar. He was a liar. Well, I said, no, you're a flat-out liar. It's a damn lie. He's scared of me. That's why he didn't like talking to me. He was scared. Because he knew he couldn't shoot no breeze on me. He could shoot it with you, but not me. I said, you're a flat-out liar. I said, I said, you're a damn liar. Yeah. You are a flat-out liar. Well, how did you disprove him? I went to the book. Well, maybe, well, okay, he didn't do that for me. Okay, then. Well, I, just like I said, you're a liar. He didn't have truth in him. Men get impressed with things like, oh, I'm going to Australia. I can build cabinets. I can do this. I can build a cabin. I can build anything. I can build this building here. Lay the blocks. I can build that. I got the design. I said to Simeon, let's modify this queen. Take it and look at it. This will work. And old Simeon says, uh, ah, we'll get it done. He modified this queen web here. That's what he did. Whose wisdom was that? Well, that was someone that knew that before we knew it. I will mine. Insult the people of Brazil as though there are no prophets there, messengers there. Hell, he could have went right there to Monroe and had enough labor there and slept in the woods too. Hallelujah. I don't dote on people. Look, I will never allow anyone to come here 
than I put my ark aside for someone else and I want to be around him more than I do that. No, sir. I don't care who you are. You're listening. That's just the truth. I'm not going to do that. Not me. I don't get excited. Oh, I love to see the see Yisra'ya come here. I do. That's why we keep the place beautiful. I want them to come. But I don't operate that way. Not me. I'm not easily deceived or overtaken. Not that way. I'm wise to that degree. Not wise as you, not wise as you but I'm wise enough. Can I move a little farther? Listen quickly, quickly here. Why, why, why is the mind of Yisrael so full of uh, darkness? If the prophet tells us why, will we believe it? Oh, we don't believe a damn thing. But I'll read you what the prophet says. Yeremiah, go quickly. You know one thing that the darkness of our mind does what it creates? It creates this false attitude. And we become confident in our own ways. This is what Yah says to the people of Yisrael, Yeremiah chapter 2, verse 29. Yeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 29. When we get this darkness, we have this self-abrasive assurance. He asks the question, therefore, Yah says, Jeremiah 2, 29, he said, will you reap? Yah said, will you, con will you complain or reap to me? You understand what he is saying here, will you complain to me? Jeremiah 2.29, Yah says, therefore you complain to me. You read back. He is saying, you, you're going to contend with me? You're going to strive against me? Well, Yah, I know you said that, but. Yah, I know that's what you mean, but uh, I thought it was that. You ever said that? Should we have? So Yah says, will you read with me? Uh, he said, all of your wicked children of hell, not Sama, not Levi, not Simeon, not Nephtali. He said, all, all of you all have, for Shach, you have transgressed. You have been a revolter. You have rebelled against the Torah of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, against me. Now, we've never rebelled against Yah, have we? He said, all have revolted against me, says Yah. Then he tells us, he says, and shove in vain, have I nacha, I've beaten the hell out of you to no avail, to no reward. He said, I have corrected your children. They receive some correction and no correction. We don't receive no Musa, do we? We don't receive no correction, Yisrael. We don't want it. That's the darkness of one's mind. That's why there is no healing and no mighty works among Yisrael. He said, we receive no correction. He said, your own sword, your own tongue, your own words have devoured your Navi'im. You have killed your own prophets. Well, Reox, that I burn it. And so you, you conjure together and you call upon your spirit of bewitching and witchcraft and try to dismantle. I've watched them do this. And you all this been with me. You know what has happened. But they can't bring me down. He says, with your own sword, you have destroyed your Navi'im like a destroying lion. Now, that's destruction. You have destroyed them like a lion devour the pride or, or a beast. And there's one thing about the human nature. Uh, we can't chew either way. We can move our jaws, but a lion can only go one way. That's up and down. Hi. He can't chew. The mouth goes up and down. It doesn't. Yah's given us the ability to kind of rotate that food around. He said, you have, you have gnawed on them like a lion. He calls us a door, O generation. Do you understand, see you the word of Yah? Have I been like a wilderness, a mitzbar, a mitzbar to Yisrael? Yah? Has Yah been like a land of darkness? Is this Yah? Has it been a dark, a land of darkness unto us? Now, the only reason that he is a land of darkness, uh, and the only reason uh, whereby there is a darkness and opaqueness, uh, is because we are superficial and we have more confidence in us than we have in him. So, has he been that way with us? No, he hasn't. 
as he brought us to the land of darkness, even in Misraim, as I read from Yesha last week. Uh, even when death came, he killed his people in the midst of the darkness, but they still had light. And all around them it was darkness, and they could not even see the light. They could not even see the light. They could not see one drop of light, Yisraya. He says, wherefore, says my people, we are, we are Be'el, we are lords, we are gods. They say that. That's what we say. Yeah. I am a Be'el. I can find the remedy of my healing. No, there's only one process to the healing power of Yah. That's why we can't, we don't despise the herbs and all of that, but we got to get back to what Yah commands. We trying to herb everything to death and ain't doing a damn thing. The herbs of the field, what? Collard greens and, and kale and all that. That's all right. We eat it. Eat it raw, eat it cooked, eat it juice, whatever you want to. These are the herbs. It's more than just herbs we think of. All the herbs. The grasses out here we don't even know that are so wonderful to eat. And because we have grown thick and fat, we don't take the time to want to learn. That's why he say, come out, he gives us our mind that we can stay healthy, we can stay strong, our skin is vibrant, we're beautiful looking people, we're not fat and grotesque, we're not out of shape, hell, we can't walk a block. Our countenance are healthy, our, our smiles are healthy, our teeth are healthy, our walk are healthy, our bodies are healthy. There's no we try to find an easy way out. Oh, heal me, yeah. He said, hell no, he's not healing us. We're in the dark season. Oh, you don't believe in the healing? Oh, I know the healing. And they did. Yahshua said, these works that I do, greater works shall you do. And when they left from under the, that power light, they went and did great works. And as they began to grow old and pass away, those that were behind them, it began to grow dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Now we're in the twilight of the evening. And we're stumbling. We're stumbling. We're stumbling with ourselves. We're stumbling uh, over Yah's Musa's discipline. We, wanna, we don't want to hear anything that, 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 that contradict our belief. And show us what we are. We don't want to hear anything. Uh, we want to be exuded and exalted and lifted up. Uh, oh, he is so sweet. He is not sweet. Uh, oh, she is so precious. She's not precious. Uh, she's a wicked busy body. In other bodies, of everybody's affairs. That's why I say to Ark, really, I don't care how you feel. I just don't go to homes. I don't care how sick you are. Very few houses I will go to. I just don't go because if I go in there and see something, I'm going to talk about it. And he'll say, he talked about that cause he came in my house. Hell yes. Hell yes. And so when I talk about it, it's not because I've been there. I can see you and tell you what's in your house. So I don't do that. I want you all to make those meatballs right tomorrow. I want them to be succulent and right. Because Ak Yosef likes. I would have yesterday just because of him. But why not for Shimbri? Don't worry about Shimbri. Why not for me? Ah, see then, you can't esteem nobody. I went out and got all that just because of Yosef. So they came back, I said, see, these are soft bonds, you said. He doesn't like the hoagie. I said, they're all hoagies, yo. I got the ones that were long, you can cut. I got the ones. I got two different kinds of cheeses for him and shred some lettuce and put on there and lay I don't do that for me, man. But I did this with this man. You understand? Yeah? Yeah. I can fuss at him and his eyes get watery and he wants to cry. He always tell me I want to do right. So we're going to do right by him. And since Zach and Yarami are tomorrow, I got a little things to do tomorrow and get some of that punch. I want some of that punch for him as well. That punch. I don't even do that for him. I ain't going to do it. I do it for him. How about that? You ought to do it for me. You, you ain't like him. You too mean. No, I'm not doing it for you. We're not going to have no K. 
carrot juice for dinner. Has fried chicken. Got some pinto beans. Some butter beans. Of course, we got some watermelons today, too. How about that? Is that all right, yo? All right. I'll finish up after the ones. We're going to eat that, but we're going to eat some of this first. How about that? I like this man here. I really like him. Although I stay on him, I like him. He's my friend. I can talk to him all the time. I can fuss at him. Tell him you're a damn wicked piece. I see you're filthy. I'm going to bed last night. This is what I'm talking to me. You're a wicked man. You're filthy. But he gave me sweet rest. Because I'm bleak honest with me. You feel the man? Yada ya for the dam of Yashua. Oh, look at him. Yada ya for the dam of Yashua. Hamashi yada ya yada da for the dam of Yashua. I like that. Y'all look so beautiful. Look at my ab now. Come on, put your hand like that. Blow on that horn. One more art you said. That's all right. Oh, that's when I start singing that he shot. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's all right. Yeah, man. You want to hear that kind of singing? Huh? Yeah, man. He wants to hear that. He said that song there. Yeah, man. Okay, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will proceed with cautiousness to attack every way of wickedness and darkness. Anytime we're walking in any way but the way, it produces one, one, one kind of mind. And if anyone can give us the concept of that, it is Shilobo. Quickly, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19. Proverbs 4, 19, I'm going to read. It says, the way of the wicked is as darkness. Afallah. Proverbs 4, 19. The way of the wicked. Is this not a wicked generation? We have forgotten the way of Yah. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not. What they stumble, as the Torah says, they stumble upon the mountain. They know not at what they stumble. And we are people that are stumbling on every front. We're stumbling in our prayer and life. We're trying to get healing, and there is no healing. There's only one process of this healing power of God today. There's only one way it's going to flow. We must uh, embrace your Yeshua HaMashiach. And it cannot be with pretense. It's got to be real. It's got to be real, Yisraya. It's got to be so real that even the world, when they looked at Yorkshire, they said, no man, no man. Who is this man? Uh, no man can do these works unless Yah's with them. Uh, no man can stand. No one can walk like that unless Yah's with that man. 
Our sins have made us grotesquely uh, unattractive. And here we're trying to refine it and do it the way the world. We're not going. That's not the healthy look. I don't care what men say. There's one thing I will never back down. And when I get over, I can't walk then. It's a different ball game. But we have a great light in us. And I command. I don't care where I go. I care who it is. And I see it all the time. Now, I don't have no purple suit or no red, red suit. No. Nah. Don't need that. I have light. I have the ma'or. I have the light of the rejoicing of Torah in my bosom. Hear this. The way of the wicked is as darkness. Um, they that, they know not at what they stumble. You see, that's why this damn Jesus, this false anti-Hamashiach, and so what the enemy has done from that ninth hour, he has raised up these false prophets. Uh, even in the Greek, he calls them Sudhu, Msufas. And I will use the Greek when it comes to their gods. You understand? So it's raised up these false pseudo prophets. Uh, and so we see, the, we see the healing power about the works of hell. Uh, we in the darkness of the ninth or the last of the hour. We in the Akarith. Uh, Yochanan gives us perfect insight of that. Uh, in the book of Revelation, Gilyala, Revelation 13, 14. Uh, there are two things I want to read quickly. Because we think that the powers of hell uh, do not have the power to manifest, uh, to emulate the power of Yoshua. That's a lie. It says in Gilead, now this is this one that has been raised up. Jesus is a damn lie. He is a damn false God. He, forgive me, y'all. He is a damn God. He's the God of the damn heathens and the fools. Gilead, now, Revelation 13, 14. Yochanza saw this powerful entity. He was raised up out of the darkness of the delusion of the mind of man. To come serve them, uh, to draw them under the delusion of hell uh, for one purpose. i show you what that is. Revelation 13, 14. It says, and he deceived them that dwell, live upon the Olam. And by the means of those Simeon. Does it say miracles? Yeah. A Simeon is just like a, an oof of Yah. It is beyond the comprehension for one to perceive. It is of great magnitude. It is beyond the expressive superlative of a man to say why this has transpired. It did not just say he was able by the means of those miracles uh, which he had power to do in the sight uh, of the Nahash, uh, the Tanim. Uh, he did it in the sight of Nahash, uh, not just in the sight of the beast power, but the spirit of the beast, which is Nahash. It is subtle. It is sneaky. It is defiance of Yah. It denies Yahshua. Raises up a damn batter unto this damn puppy dog Jesus. It says he had power to do miracles in the sight of the beast. What is the nature of the beast? What We have the nature of Yah. We have his breath, right? We have the Ruach HaKodash. What is the nature of the beast? What is the spirit of the beast? It is Nahash. It is a defiance of Yah. It is an unwillingness. And we find ourselves cooperating with that spirit more than we do that we're led by the Ruach of Yah. Because the Ruach of Yah, it leads and guides us into some truth, doesn't it? Cold truth. And it began where the Ruach of Yah, when it comes... And when it first comes, it judges. When a man wakes up in the morning, he wakes up by the breath of the rock, it judges you. We judge you, woman. Huh? Stop your damn folly. Your superficial activities as though you're spiritual. You're not spiritual. Because when what is spiritual, they judge all things. The house always begins at their own house. Does the judgment of God first begin at his own house? So it began that first. What shall be the end of the wicked and those that disobey Yah? So that's the first thing the Ruach got, got you, or oh, judge you. Because you can get up in the morning crank as hell, and wicked as hell, and stupid as hell. And that is the rule of your loins all day long, your damn stupidity. You can't break me down, don't even try it. All right? 
He said, by the miracles which he had power to do in the sight of Nahash, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image. We're just talking about the imaginations of one's own heart. You shall make an image, you shall imagine an image uh, to the beast, uh, which have been wounded by the word of Yah and did live. Uh, you can kick the hell out of that Jesus. Uh, he's been wounded. Oh, that damn Jesus has been wounded. That's why he's so fragmented. You got the white Jesus thumpers, you got the black Jesus thumpers, you got the Mexican, yeah, you got the damn white Jesus thumpers, you got the damn Mexican, you got the damn Jew Jesus thumpers, you got the damn black Jesus thumpers, you got all kind of Jesus thumpers, all right? And that damn coward has been wounded. That's why he's so fragmented. You got the black Jesus, you got the black Baptist, you got the white Baptist, you got the Jew Baptist, you got the Greek Baptist, you got the Puerto Rican Baptist, you got the Chinese Baptist. Don't come to me with that bull jive. He's been wounded. His body is not strong. He's been wounded yesterday. Hell, the same black Jesus is wounded among the black. And the damn rich white folks don't give a damn about the poor trash white people. It is the truth. And the bourgeois Negroes don't give a damn about the poor Negroes. Hallelujah. Oprah Winfrey doesn't give a damn about you. She spit on you. Rush Limbaugh would say, go to hell. He will not even touch you. Poor white trash, he would say. He doesn't even shake hands with his people. He got a contingency of bodyguards and people don't get close. I don't think we get close to him or those that are in his social circle. And we're so damn stupid. Try to defend whiteness. Whiteness is the corrupt entity of hell. Try to defend blackness, Jewishness, damn Jewishness and blackness and whiteness. It's come out that silly, crazy mind. I'm not going to stop talking about that mind. And you look coward, write me again. He, undoubtedly, he's still listening. I won't even mention his name. He's listening. He's so dry. If he got so much, why would he listen to me? Because he knows I'm real. And he's false. Well, that cannot be. Why, why do you think Yah's allowing this to transpire? The Torah must answer that. It not, just cannot answer in one breath or one writing of one nobi. There must be a witness of that through the mouths of the prophets, isn't it? I want to begin with this one. He was a shulish ach. He was a mighty messenger. He was one that was an apostle, a mighty messenger of strength of Yah. I want to begin here and show you this in the book of Thessalonica. Yah. First, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonica. Yah. Hallelujah. What we see today with all these pigs and dogs of hell, we see the works of hell trying to overshadow the power of Yah. It must be proven, Yisrael Yah. There's no mighty miracles, no mighty power of Yah's work among Yisrael Yah because there's one reason it is absent. There is one reason that is absent, Yisrael Yah. And when I close, I'm going to close on that and let you know why there is no mighty miracles. Why there is no mighty power of Yah. Oh, I love Yah. We are there. We are such procrastinators and we're such people of falseness. It says in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. It talks about this false Hamashiach that I just, this false Christ, uh, this Christ that come. And I read about him in Gileadah 13, 14. But Shaul gives us uh, the, 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 the design of this mind. In 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonica, uh, chapter 2 verse 9. He said, there is one who's coming. Uh, he's coming after the workings. Does it say that in your rendition? He's coming with the emphasis, the power, the dictates uh, of Hashatan. And he's not coming with a little power. He's coming with all power. He's coming with the power of the name of Jesus. He's coming with the power of the damn filthy dog, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the damn filthy, unclean lie. The Holy Ghost is out of the Sanskrit language uh, of the Brahmas, of the gods of Hinduism. Uh, damn your Holy Ghost. Damn it. Damn your God and damn your Jesus. Uh, the name is anti Hamashiach. Does it say he's coming with all power? He's coming with all power. He's coming with signs, the, the Greek, uh, Tira, coming with all signs, and he's coming with lying wonders. It says lying, the wonders of darkness, of hell, to deceive just like the delusion of a magician. 
that deceive the minds and trick the minds. Hallelujah. Just like the magician, they perform a trick and you think that, that he, he got rid of that, he's, it's still there. He just tricked the mind, played a trick on your mind. You see it? Ah, it's gone. Let me show you one. See that? Look up there. See that? It's gone. Where is it? He's coming with lying wonders. Listen, lying wonders. And he's going to operate in the spirit of mirma, of deceit. It is mirma, or the guile and the subtlety of darkness. Was not Hashatan the most subtle creature? Was he one that was full of guile? Did not with his subtlety he beguile Hava? He beguiled the woman, and out of that came the birth of the DNA of that seed uh, of darkness. Uh, and what is the birth of that? That one defies the Torah and the beauty of Torah of Almighty Yah in Yoshua. He's coming with all deceit and with all evil, all unrighteousness. Why? In them that perish. Why? This is a profound statement against us. Because they receive not. When Yah says, lo, not, there is no possibility. Because they receive not. Because they receive not. Because they receive not what? The ahab, the love, the love of the Torah, of the truth. They don't receive the loving tenderness and the kindness of Torah. They get upset with me because I uproot their wickedness and expose your vile and wicked ways. And we don't receive the love of the truth. Because they receive, they will not embrace, they will not love uh, the truth. Uh, why? That they might be delivered. That's the only way you're going to be delivered. That's the only way you're going to be your shock. You got to love truth. You got to allow truth to love you. You got to be truthful with yourself and honest. And you can look for the miracles in Jesus' damn name. There is no miracle. It is a bewitching of the mind. It is the delusion of hell. You don't prevail in that because you go back and do the same thing. When Yah performs a miracle, it's for one thing, Yisrael. It is for one thing. It is for the purpose of the generation of our sons and daughters to understand one thing. Not this damn master. Come on, Benny, and heal them and they go around and get drunk. He needs to pray for them and they go around and have some kind of promiscuous sexual activity that is so far because he's a damn uh, wicked fat dog adulterous. Yeah. You will never hear T.D. Jakes. These men talk about the activity of adultery and sins of the flesh because they're guilty as hell. These are some of the filthiest men on the face of the earth. Some of the most effeminate men on the face of the earth. They are effeminate. And that's why all these whole houses, you become a part of them, you do the same thing. The young men that went in these places with great intent. And then they become adulterous, pig thumping dogs. No love for y'all. That's all right. He ain't going to hurt nobody. We'll get him out. That's what they become. Adulterous dogs of hell. He's coming with all this kind of deceit, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceit in verse 10 uh, of unrighteousness uh, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, uh, that they might be delivered. That's why we are perishing. Uh, that's why our faith is perishing. Our love for Yah is perishing, uh, because we don't receive the love of the truth. Uh, and we're looking for some kind of superficial healing for the moment to heal our flesh that we can go and do those things that are wicked. And so that's why the medical profession is just being inundated. They're becoming multi-millionaires because they're pumping every kind of damn strange thing into us. I can't stop talking like that even though among us that we do that. It's still not right. I can't make it right. No tell me we have the Imuna. Hell no, we don't have it. We love the Imuna. Hell, our wives don't give a damn. They can't pray for damn that. And damn, you can't even pray for a buzzard. Let's get real and examine our own damn wicked hearts and see how corrupt we are. I don't have to examine you. 
Oh, I believe hell, the demons believe. And they tremble. You don't even tremble. That's a profound statement, young man. I'll prove it out, okay? In them that did perish, in verse 11. And for this cause, for this reason, your sure sin strong, I use the Greek play, strong delusion. He's going to send the spirit of deceit, of error, of falsehood. And even in the Greek expression of that word plane, just like an airplane, it has one component that is so profound above all of that. It's one thing. Can I tell you what it is? Of one's own opinion. And everybody got a, an opinion. Who knows what the word opinion means? I will tell you what it means. Do you understand what the word opinion means? It is to assess and to judge. That's all opinion is. You're making judgment. Well, that's my opinion. I don't judge somebody. You damn liar. I listen to the words of my own speech. I'm not that wise. When I don't understand what it means, I try to find its origin. And so people will argue with you and say, well, that's not what opinion means. Opinion is that you make assessment and you make judgment. Well, well I don't judge nobody. Oh, you hypocrite. I judge men because I judge me. But the same judgment I judge you, I judge me with much more severe. Because I'm not going to do what you do. I'm not going to continue in the path that I know that is wrong. And I see the delusion of that path. No, I'm going to turn to Yah. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to turn around from that way because it is destruction. And we look at something to satisfy our flesh for the moment. It's not going to be in this dark hour. The just are going to live by Imona. We're going to live by the faith of Yah. We're going to have confidence in Yah. Whether we buy it or not. I'm a woman of faith. You're a hypocrite. You don't even have no faith. That's how people try to promote themselves. Oh, I have faith, baby. I love to pray. You hypocrite. You love to sleep and eat. I don't like to pray. A lot of pray, you'll be fasting and all of that. You can see it in your physical stature. Give me that bull shice thing. Oh, baby, I love to pray and I love to just seek the, quote, seek the loud, unquote. You ain't seeking nothing. You seeking your bed, and that's your damn belly, woman, man. That's your Lord, your, your greasy gut. Ain't no way, Shimmy, I saw that big old man, his gut was, Shimmy, it, it was a moment like that. I will even let someone like that touch me. I said, don't touch me. Don't even lay your hands on me. Even in all my ignorance, I don't let the men lay hands on me. Like, uh uh, yeah, nah. And it was amazing that in all of those situations, they will all acknowledge me. They all would. The Lord God got his hands on you. You better be a mighty man. I'm not lying. It's the truth. It's just the truth. You spurs on to the Lord God. This man is an apostle. I could stay with that half of I could have went. Been a part of that walk. I could be traveling all over the United States. Had a big old house. Looked at that dirty Jezebel of a woman, of a thing. I wouldn't even submit myself to nothing like that. And I was ignorant. Still I am ignorant. Can I move on and close out? I like this. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Y'all's going to send this playing, this opinionated people. Verse 11. He's going to send this strong delusion. That they may believe the pseudos, Greek now, the lies, the deceitfulness of those damnable perceptions, uh, precept. That they may believe a lie. What lie? This damn false Jesus. This name of the damn gods and the lying Jesus talk. And the miracle working Jesus thumpers. They're not performing no damn miracles. There's nothing organically being performed. And that's the truth, Yisrael. It says uh, that they all might be grenu. That's Greek now, grenu. That they all might be damned. Why? Because they believe not the truth. We must believe the truth. What is truth? His Sadiq is an everlasting righteousness. 
And his Torah, his law is the truth. Because they believe not the truth, but took pleasure in Israel. They took pleasure in their opinionated ideas. And they, and they gathered in their, in their corners to talk their opinions. They did not talk from the truth. And then they heal one another's minds with lies, uh, that they will strengthen the lies and continue on in that path and that direction. Uh, it is one thing that the healing power of Yah's word, it heals us. Uh, it restores us back unto our first love, uh, to him that loved us. Uh, and that is what truth does. Uh, it restores us, bring us back to love, Yah. That's what it does. And that's the fact of the matter. It is the truth. You think Yah performed the, the, those miracles just to show us that he was great? Can I show us? I have a few more minutes. I want to show us. Why? There's a reason. And that's why there are no mighty miracles today. Your pastor is a damn liar. He ain't casting out a damn thing. He get folks and they get the puking up like damn dogs. Because they, their breath get the stinking like a mule. And they're going, fa, 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 fa. They call themselves casting out demons. And we buy that damn illusion. And that drug dealers in there like, man, this is bullshit, talk, man. That ain't nothing. And so undoubtedly there's nothing clean among them. Because when an unclean spirit is cast out, it searches to and fro. Look at a place that I can enter, a clean place. And when it comes back, it doesn't go to a dirty place. When it comes back, it found the house swept, garnished, and cleaned. Then he goes there with seven more demons, more wicked than him. He becomes the perfect law of that mind. He becomes the complete instructions of that mind and that will. I will preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. A few verses I want to close on, but I must read this in the book of Yasher. In the book of Yasher. Chapter 63. This will answer your question why. Does his word perform in the way that it does? There's only one thing that Yah even suffered the miracles of Yahshua, the great power of his word, to be manifested among a people that were heathenistic. I will read it. And I must show you that in books that are of the same similitude of the book of Yesha. I will read this first. In the book of Yesha, write it down, chapter 63, verse 6. It says, therefore, all Mizraim began from that day forth to embitter the lies. Now, yeah, they began Mizraim when the king died. That was the king that rose up, the, uh, uh, that rose up, did not know Yisra'ah. And so from that day, the death of that king, uh, that pharaoh, Yisra'ah, Mizraim began to embitter the lies uh, of the sons of Yaakov. Listen. And to afflict them with all matters of hard labor because... They had not known their ancestors. They didn't know their forefathers. So they afflicted the people of Yah. That's, that, that's why I'm going to teach you on that out in California. It's going to broadcast here about uh, the nature of Esav and why Yah commands us, leave him alone, see, because he caused the life of Yisrael to be bitter. And so the people that did not know the ancestors uh, of Yisrael, they caused their lives to be hard pressed and bitter. Who had delivered them in the day of the famine. And this is the catalyst here. The next verse. And this was also from Almighty Yahweh. He caused that. He raised a Pharaoh, didn't he? He caused them to be embittered by that. He says, that bitter labor. He says, and this was also from Almighty Yahweh. For the children of Yisra'ya. Yah caused that. He put it on them for one reason. Can I read it? For the children of Yisrael to benefit them in their latter days in the Akariah. He did that, that you and I, remembering our ancestors, that we may benefit in the latter days. He did it for that in this hour, that they suffer that embitterment that we, that's what it says. That the children of Yisrael to benefit them in their latter days. Why, Yah? In order that all, in order that all, in order that all, in order that call out each whole, that all of the children of Yisrael might yada. They might know. They might know. They might know Yahweh, their Almighty. 
Your shoe paid the price. He did it all. That's why he did that. And that even the affliction of his nation today is that the children, all children of Yisrael may know Yah. Because we're people that live by a moon, the power of his faith with great confidence. Hear this. Hear this in verse 8 of Yeshua 63. And in order, and in order now, to know the signs, the oath, and the mighty wonders, isn't this what I just read uh, from Thessalonica? Yeah? Yes. He shall perform with mighty wonders and miracles. Uh, and in order to know the signs and the mighty wonders which Yah would do in Misraim uh, on the account of his people, Yisraim, that's why he did that. For us, for our account, in order, 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 that the children, that the children, that the children, that the children of, that the children of Yisrael, that the children of Yisrael may, Yare may fear him. That's what miracles are for, that we may fear Yah. These whole houses get happy even though those are in, it says he did this in order that the children of Yisrael may fear Yahweh the Almighty of their Avah. That's why the miracles, that's why, that we may fear Yah and walk in all of his ways and walk in all of his ways and that their seed after them all the days of their life. The miracles, the more faith. No one fears Yah today. We don't fear him. We are flat out pseudo polyander when we say we do. Oh, I tremor you, lion heifer. You clown of a Joe Nucker, Billy Bob. He did it all that we may fear him. He did it all that we may fear him. He did it all that we may fear and to know, and to know he did that. My, oh yeah. Listen, that we may fear him. That we may fear him and that we may fear Yah, the almighty of our father and walk not in some of his ways, but walk in all of his ways. All the ways of a man that pure in his own sight, but Yah ponders the Ruaka, that we may walk in his ways, not in your damn filthy, greedy, lustful, damnable, wicked ways. There's no miracle power of Yah in that. That we may walk in all of his ways uh, and that their seed after them all the days. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we may fear him. But that doesn't give us any kind of assurance yeah. or insurance that this is of great validity. Well, Moshe writes as well in Dibarim. In the book of Dibarim. Hallelujah. Dibarim 26, verse 8. And Almighty Yahweh brought us forth out of the land of Misraim. He used this Hazak, this mighty, Deuteronomy 26, 8. He brought us out with a mighty hand. We know that Yoshua is the Yacht, the right hand of Yah with a mighty hand. And he did it with an outstretched arm. And with great, he says, uh, Mura, or oh, great, terribleness. It was beyond inspiring. It's beyond a spectacular event. And with signs and with wonders. That's why he brought us out that we may fear him. And he did it with signs and wonders that we may be all stricken. When we see that we defy the ways of Yah and pursue our own ways and in the midst of our own ways we're looking for the healing. There's no healing in Jesus' name. There's no healing. And in this dark hour, we're going to live by the power of his moon, by the power of Imuna, his great faith. We're going to have to have trust, confidence in him. For us to live is your sure, for us to die is gain. We got to go, we got to have that kind of great resolve in us. And so what this wicked, Christ-like generation is doing, they, they think that these false signs, Benny Hinn, he packs them out. T.D. Jakes, go, he goes in it when they come by the tens of thousands. He will have this mega fest down in Texas 
They will come like whores and the faggots and dogs. Uh, he doesn't uproot any faggot. He doesn't speak against the faggot bull daggers, the adulterous, the wicked one. He doesn't speak against that because he will empty that whole house out overnight. And so what they're saying to the people, this is the spirit of anti-Hamashiach. This is this false spirit, Yisra'ya. You see the miracles of Yah, you're going to believe. No, that's not what make Yisra'ya believe. Because if it is, then the Torah is a lie. It says in the book of Bimetbar, in the book of Namaz 1411. Listen to this. Read, let's read this. Namaz 1411. You would think at the mighty oath of Yah, the signs of Yah, that it will cause the people to believe. That they didn't believe a damn thing and we still don't believe. He can cause us all to grow 10 feet tall. We will not believe that. And when Yah says, damn it, I'm going to kill all the bastards, the Mamziah, that's when Moshe began to intercede and say, Yah, please. Uh, in the book of Bimidbar, Numbers 1411, uh, and Yah said unto Moshe, how long will this damn wicked people know us? Uh, how long will they provoke me? Uh, how long will they hate me? How long will they despise me? How long will they denounce me? Uh, he said, how long will this damn wicked people know us me? And how long will it be until they believe me? We don't believe. How long will it be until they believe me? How long will it be until they believe us? How long will it be, be until they believe you're my messenger? How long will it be they believe that the my, my mighty hand drying up this waters, uh, the floods of death against them? Miracles don't make us believe. That is not the order of Yah's house. He said, how long will it be until they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown Asa among them. He said, for all these signs I've shown them, how long will they believe me? They don't even believe me. They don't even believe me. I've shown them mighty signs. He's caused life in a clay body. His word is tabarim to rise up. We still don't believe him. He say, how long will it be? They don't believe me? That's what he said. The miracles don't make nobody believe a damn thing. They follow your show for one thing, for the fish and the loaves. And when he commanded unto them, you must denounce you, mama, daddy, sons, daughters, and all, and pursue the, the way of Yah, then they all and turn and walk no more with them. Over 5,000. And he looked back at the Talmudim and said, will you also leave me? And they utter no, though all men forsake you, even if I, I will not. And before the cock crowed, he had denied him thrice. And before even our breath comes out of our loins, we have denied the power of Yah. And the miracle breath that we have. We're going to pay a price. I don't care what we think. Or he using that fear tactic. No, I'm using truth. You don't have to buy it. Hallelujah. I'm using truth. He said all the miracles I've shown them, they still don't believe it. He wakes us up. Woke me up this morning. He started me in the way of truth. I tell you all this morning, I did not get up until 7. I used to get up a little early, late, I've been getting up a little early on the Shabbat, so I can, y'all give me something to kind of refresh the hearts of the people. Many times I don't have nothing to refresh your hearts, just the Torah in my heart. And so I was up and really didn't have time to Spend time in Torah. But that's all right. This will feed you. That is. Hallelujah. He's shown us great miracles. Even in you. And we still don't tremble before him, do we? We don't believe him. And it's just the truth. And so we're being handed all these dogs and their Jesus and their damn anti-Hamashiach spirit. This is a pseudo spirit. Jesus is a damn lie. It is the created lie out of the Greek Latin. There is no Jesus in the chronology of Yah's family lie of the sons of Ibram of the Hebraic nation. No Jesus at all. None cannot be a Jesus. 
And so they have put this miracle. That's why Hashatan is going to be able to see many. Because they have put this as the priority of all things. But Shaul writes unto Corinthians and say, Look, you all got it all wrong. Turn that quickly. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. I'm going to read. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. It says here in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Yah gives us the order of his house is Bayat. And there's a reason why. It says, uh, And Yah has set some in the congregation. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. He has set an order. He gives us the order here. He has set some in the congregation. First apostles. The Shulisha. The messengers of great strength. The messengers that have, that, have, that, that have had the visitation of Almighty Yah and Yoshua. He has set in the house apostles. Uh, and then those that are secondary, they are the Novium, the Novi, the prophet, the messengers. Uh, that will destroy everything, uh, tear it down, build it up. Uh, and that the teachers may come and nurture that. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, he said teachers. Uh, and he said there's a process after that. Well, then after that, uh, miracles. Uh, because miracles don't make people believe in fear, Yah. He said miracles. He said then the gifts of healing. Uh, gifts of healing, I believe in that. If men, would, if men would try to harness and nurture the gift, they want to be masters of everything. Uh, even all the old men I meet today, they all want to know everything. I don't want to know everything. Uh, they want to know everything and they know everything. And they don't study the mastery of the nurturing, uh, of the healing to nurture their faith. Uh, we need that among us. That they can gather the elders and pray. Because they know the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail much. And they thought a sick may be healed. They ain't doing a damn thing. They're sitting around all damn day. Not doing a damn thing. Eating and fat as hogs. Uh, and, and watching television. And on the damn internet. And that's the truth. I'm talking to you my friend. And I'm not a coward. I don't fear you. What if I bring a gun? I'll try to find a way to get away from me. Call the police. Call someone down 911. Read about blasting nobody coming in here, but because you got a gun, that doesn't mean that we don't have guns here. All come and want to fight you. You'll be in trouble. One said to me the other day, you, listen, you're talking about someone being six foot, three, four, five, and and you bang that body. He said, you talk a lot with that mouth of yours. I said, my friend, I said, I don't have to worry about a cat that's six foot five we fighting because first of all, he's not gonna fight me. I'm not gonna give him any reason to fight me. And then if I scratch out running, he, he's probably, probably not in shape. So he can't catch me. I can still jet a little bit. That's fat, I can roll. I said, so he can. But yeah, you got that talk, but you talking about one six foot five, and if he did come the wrong way, and if we had to go that way, he would, he would have to show me what he got. So I don't have to worry about that, because I'm not going to do that with a man six foot five, and one that is five three. You don't have to worry about me. I said, my friend, the, all the fights I've started, I lost them, and I don't lose a fight. I win them all. I don't start no fight. Oh, I don't start to fight with the devil because I know that as Yah raised up one that was devious and wicked as Pharaoh, he raised up Hashatan to get honor upon his name. And so uh, I have no problem with the devil. He's an enemy of Yah, and Yah says, I'm going to fight this battle. Don't worry. I got him. We're no match for him. Put it in your shoes, hand. He will make it all right. Put it in. Hands of your shoe, huh? Yah will make it all right. Put it in the master's mighty hands. Oh, put it in your shoe's hands. That's why I put it. That's why I put it. He told me to cast all my burdens upon him. Because he cares. That's enough for me. Hallelujah. So I'm not worried about fighting a man six foot five or seven five. Man seven foot five, I don't think he got the agility and the sprint to catch me. I'll do like I saw Uck Abner when the, she was looking for him, but how to go see he was, he just right. I said, he looked there, he's right there by, and she doesn't even see him. Right on him. She can't see a thing. Why? Because she's looking too hard to see him. Hide and go seek, as I learned as a kid. You don't look hard. You look over there, oh, oh, and there he is over there. You know, that's not how you play hide and go seek. You just look. 
You got to keep a constant panorama. You'll see them. But if you get drawn to that way, oh, Admiral, right there. She's right there now. The boy over there on the step, you were right there. He was right there on, the, on that on green step, and he's looking. He's like, I got her. All they got to do is run. I, she can't get me. That's all. I said, boy. And she's looking down there. She, she's looking down the road. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm going to get you. Uh-huh. I'm going to get you. I'm going to find you. And he's on the side like, you ain't going to find me. I got you. Hallelujah. We'll conclude here. So that's not what he said. In order then he helps. Who wants to help today? Nobody wants to help nobody. Help. Then he got government. And then he got diversity of tongues, languages. Your verbiage may be different than mine. Your speech of the wisdom of Yah may be a little different, but others can understand that. So the miracles are not the most profound things in the house of Yah. It is the, it is the order of his messengers. And what he speaks, he speaks on the behalf of Almighty Yah and Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a reason why. A sickness upon us, the word keli, we're clothed with sicknesses. And there's a reason why. I want to close with one of the most beautiful words of the psalmist's heart, David. He says to us, while we're in the condition we're in and what it takes for us to be healed. In Tehillium Psalms 107, Psalms 107 and verse 17. Hear what David says here, Yisra'ya. He says the fool. And as the old ones would say, I quote it in their vernacular. Quote, loud nose, he's a fool. Unquote. He says here in Psalms 107 verse 17, the fools, the one that is Evan, the one that mocks wisdom, the one that mocks correction, the one that denounces the wisdom of Yah and despises it, he says that the fool's derech, or the way of the fool, uh, is a fesha, it is a transgression. It defies Torah. It defies the wisdom of Yah. And because of their iniquity, they are afflicted. They are ana. Because of our defiance of Torah, what is, we know that iniquity, sin, is the transgression of the Torah. And because of our uh, ovi, we are afflicted. He tells us in verse 18, their nephesh, their life, this is us here. Our passion, our desire. He said, na'at, despise all manner of of meat. We don't want the meat of instruction. The meat of wisdom, we despise everything. We despise correction. We despise rebuke. We despise love because we don't want to love. The nefesh despise na'ats, have contempt for all manner of meat. And they draw near to the gates, the sha'a of death. Zakim, Benamin is going to teach on the gates. I want to be here when he teach on that, all right? He promised me he would do it. I asked him to teach a message on that. And search the Torah and find the wisdom. He said they all are at the Shekha, the gates, the entrance of death. Oh, this is our healing power. He says then they... Za'ach, they cry. Now, when that cry, the za'ach is a cry, not the, oh, oh, yeah, oh, Lord God, no. It is something that is pronounced publicly among the congregation of the people, then among each other. It says, then they za'ach to Yah in the time of their sarah, of their great anguish and pain and hellish approach from hell. 
And it says, and he delivered. See, we don't cry. That's why we're not delivered. Oh, I pray, uh, and I read the Torah. Man, stop. Stop talking like that. You're just phony as they come. And when they cried unto Almighty Yah, when they za'ach, it says, he, your shock, he delivered them. He delivered them out of all of their great agony, the distress, the pains, the strait. He delivered them out of their mitzukah, mitzukah, out of all of that. Listen now, it says this. He sent, he sent, he sent, he sent, he sent, he sent his word. He sent his Yoshua and Rafa. He healed them to make them healthy. Not only in body, but in mind and ruach and life. He sends his word, Yisra'ya. We're in a time of famine, not for the eating of bread, because we all eat enough bread. But it's for the shemach, for the hearing of the word. And the only way he's going to heal his nation, he's got to send his word. He can't send the words of damn Jesus, of, of, of some damn Jesus, of, of this damn law of Christianity, of Islam, these damn lies of Islam, uh, or Hinduism, or uh, uh, metaphysics, uh, and all that. He sent his word, it says. He calls his word to go. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent Yahshua and he Rafa them. And then he Molat. And then Yah delivered them out of their Shekharith. He delivered us out of our destructive ways. He sends his word to heal us. And this what is going forth in the name of Jesus is a damn lie. It is not the word. It is not the strength and the beauty of Yah. Then he says this. He says this. To our shame. Oh that men would the yada. So I want to get to that. That's what the yada is. It is an intensely ringing, ringing of the head. Oh, yeah. It's almost like we're standing before the judge. They get all nervous and scared. <laughs> yes, sir, your honor. Please, don't, don't put my bait in prison. Honor, you do all the time. That's what the yada is. It is an intense ringing of the hands. He says, oh, that men would praise Almighty Yah. For what? His love. For his excellent love toward us. Not only we praise him because he's tough. And for his his wonderful works to the children of men. That's what we must begin to do. Oh, that we will praise him. No miracles, no healing. I pronounce it. And I defy you to show me where you are performing it. May the riches of your rest upon you all in your shoes, mighty name. May he strengthen you. If I got enemies, I showed me some today. I denounce your damn Jesus, your Christo, your anointed one. I esteem the Hamashiach, the one that has the all of great power of almighty Yahweh. That's the one I esteem. Damn your Lord, your God, your Be'el, your culture, your heritage. Don't tell me about the culture of the Hebraic people because it didn't produce a damn thing. All of our culture produced some of the most filthiest and the vilest of things. I said to one one day, I say, what in the hell is culture? If I go to a country in Africa, what, what, I mean, what does the culture benefit them? To see some damn dirty women dancing and, and, and some nakedness and, and because they're drinking some, some goat's blood and some, that, that, come on, that's what, you call that culture? Because one can add two plus two or three plus three? I said it has no value at all, damn culture. There's only one way, and that's the way of Yah. I don't care whether it's the Anglo, the Anglo, the Anglo sections of those on the continent, what they call the dark continent. It makes so different. You think that's so beautiful? A woman with a damn plate in her lip that's out to here, a woman in China that scratches her neck that is that damn long? Or the culture of America, women dressing like damn dirty little sneaky whores, uh, land with everything, uh, filthy, they don't even bathe, that's culture, because they can twist their ass, that's man, ah, if you call that culture, that's fine by me, I will not be a part of it, I'm not impressed with that, I said I'm impressed with the word of Yah, I'm impressed with that, you know what this individual said to me, yeah you're right, 
He's always right. Yeah, there's someone that's right and you're wrong. How about that? So what's wrong with being wrong? Your pride won't let you be wrong. I don't care about that filthy culture. Here goes someone that's sweetening, they're eating whale's meat, and that's part of their culture. They got some of the silly dance. Tell me what culture. When you look at the cultures of the world, what is it all about? Dancing and music and playing. That's all it's all about. Let's go. Well, they have the pyramids. Tell me what one damn pyramid does. Tell me the strength of any damn pyramid. Tell me what it adds to the knowledge of man. Tell me what the hell metaphysics does. Killing a damn goat and drinking some goat's blood. We do greet you all. We appreciate you coming. My Ark Frank, we hope you're listening. You're home. You're it, y'all. All you that have joined us, Ark Kesner, you all down there in Tampa. The Yard, greet you all. Ark Yard in Jacksonville. And also Ark Yard there in Texas. All of you, you that have listened today, send an offering to help. Send an offering to support. Send your tithes too. I know I don't talk about it, but I preached on that. And I'm not just going to keep reverberating. You, your home has been blessed. You're so damn stingy, but when your Lord calls, who is my Lord? Your Lord is WM, Walmart. You can be sick as they come. You're getting up and you're going to make the offering. That's right. You're going to sacrifice the WM. And Dr. D to Dollar Store. Okay. YM. Y'all Mart, all right? So send us an offering to help to strengthen. May y'all's riches bless upon you all, and may he call you just like your shirt to shine. Come on, my sucking. Now, I know I went over that's all right. You stay over in Walmart, all right? You go there for 20 minutes, you stay an hour, 20 minutes. How about that? I got you on that one. May y'all brought you. We told you Yahweh for that uh, beautiful word and knowledge that he has sent to us. Just right, y'all, from his throne room, from the fire of Almighty Yahweh. Um, we do ask to remember those also, you know, these storms that are hitting around Illinois, places like that. We have a Hope Ken, we have conditions that live out out that way, Israel. Yah. So let us remember those, not only them, but there are those that are going through much trials and tribulation, Israel. Yah. Things we haven't e haven't even experienced. So let's not be so selfish amongst ourselves. Hallelujah. But let us remember those. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. Know that Yahweh, he protects Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. I know many times we might not think that Yahweh's hands is in our lives, Israel. Yah, but every breath, hallelujah, every moment of every second is almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we told you for all that you have given us, Abba Yahweh, for your mercy, for your truth, your long suffering, and for Yahshua HaMashiach, the dawn you have said, shed, Almighty Yahweh, for Yisrael, Yah, that we may be redeemed in this last hour. We just told you, Abba Yahweh, we ask you to take those that have listened today, that have gone from house to house, or maybe gathered with someone to listen today. You take them home safely, Abba Yahweh. Ask you to touch Zakane and his house, Zakane Shimmery, and all your Israel that are scattered abroad. And all things we do give you Toda, and we barack you in the mighty and precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare. Hallelujah! 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah! Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Shalom. Hallelujah.